Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat episode 255, featuring a long-awaited retrospective of the game Dark Sun Shattered Lands. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, this was a challenging video to say the least. It was hard to get this game. <laughs> it's hard to get far enough into this game to be able to show you something without looking like a complete fool uh, doing it. It is not Suffer Fools Gladly in the inter interface, uh, shall we say, takes some getting used to. Uh, but all in all, I'm really happy with it. I'm glad I put the time in uh, to really get into this game, and hopefully that will, will come through. And you'll also be willing to give this game a chance if you didn't play it back in the day. Uh, I didn't manage to get a box copy. I normally like to get a box copy so I can savor all the goodies. Uh, I was able to find, though, a copy that had come bundled with a... I don't know if it came bundled with a graphics card or a sound card or something, but anyway, it was a pack-in item. And one of the more interesting things I found in this was a uh, basically something the developers put together. Kind of they, they call it a README first, and it has uh, lots of information here about not just how to install the game on your sound card and all that good stuff, your auto exit.bat file. But there's quite a few tips in here. You know, I really wish I had read this. It's got the hotkeys list. It talks about how to get help. There's even a 1-900 number <laughs> you can call for help. <laughs> Miscellaneous uh, gameplay notes. Developer hints and suggestions. They tell you what, what kind of party you should put together. Uh, they talk about some of the, uh, you know, I guess some of the stuff that was confusing to people from the game manual. So you really get a sense here of how quickly this game was produced and rushed out the door. You know, they felt the need. Uh, I guess to print up, you know, a little, <laughs> a little thing like this. It's basically like, oh, you know, here's where, you know, here's stuff that we left out. You should probably know. Uh, you know, they probably would have caught that if they'd had more time to to play test it thoroughly. And then what else do we have here? Oh, there's a customer response card. Yeah, that'd be pretty fun to fill that out. I don't know who would end up with that nowadays. And this one is a CD-ROM. I I believe this came out. Yeah, it's got a date here, 1993. I'm pretty sure it came out on discs. So again, I'm not really sure what this came bundled with, but I thought it was just kind of fun to show you. Uh, anyway, uh, I've got about three plus hours of gameplay footage here of Dark Sun Shattered Lands with commentary. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, so without further ado, here is Dark Sun Shattered Lands. <laughs> Ooh, uh, folks, I have a game here today that, <laughs> quite honestly, I think you're going to be very happy about. If you've played it already, you'll probably enjoy this, just the nostalgia factor. But, you know, if you're like me, one of those folks that somehow missed this game back in the day, uh, you're going to be really happy, too, because this is a great game that kind of slipped under a lot of people's radar. You know, a lot of people tell me, why don't you cover the Dark Sun series? Nobody covers the Dark Sun series. What the hell? Uh, so we're going to rectify that little problem. Uh, actually, it's a big problem today. Uh, so get into this game and uh, tell you all about it, why you should play it. Uh, we'll start by where you can buy it. If you want to buy it, you can get it here from goodoldgames.com. It's a way, place I recommend, even though they don't do their affiliate program anymore, which sucks because that's you know how I afforded you know all of my castles around... Europe, uh, Eastern Europe, you know, my soccer teams and everything. Uh, you know, my revenue stream dried up because GOG doesn't do their affiliate program anymore, which stinks. But it doesn't stink because you could still get these games DRM-free. You click it, it's uh, up and running. You get the manuals, the clue books, which the clue books are really cool, by the way. Now, this uh, kind of stinks, too, but this is like $10 now, $9.99, or if you flip it up and down. If you flip it upside down, it's 666, so I don't know. Maybe this is a satanic game. Maybe you should stay away from it. But this was 50% uh, off yesterday. Now it's 10 bucks. so sorry about that. Wish I could have <laughs> got the video out a little bit quicker. But but hey, you know, it's still only 5 bucks a game, and these are really solid games. Uh, we'll be talking about Dark Sun Shattered Lands here for today, but uh, I might get into this Wake of the Ravager. Uh, maybe next time. I don't know. Maybe we'll make it a whole Dark Sun-themed uh, month. We'll, we'll see. Uh, but anyway, the advantage of getting it on GOG is you get the, uh, again, no DRM to worry about. You don't have to worry about DOS box settings, you know, any of that. You just click, click, boom, you're in. It even has a nice Steam sort of wraparound for it uh, with all your games from GOG on there. I just think it's a cool, 
These are kind of wacky guys, to be honest with you, if you remember that April Fool's thing from <laughs> a while back with the monks. You, you guys don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, anyway, uh, let's talk a little bit about the history of this before we jump in, because you know I am the guy that write, writes history books about this stuff, like uh, Dungeons and Desktops, which I covered this game in there a little bit, but no, not enough. Anyway, it came out in 1993. And this is an interesting time for computer gamers, especially, you know, I, I didn't have an IBM PC in 1993. I was rocking the uh, Commodore Amiga, which I still have, a, you know, an Amiga back there. But, you know, beyond that, I still had my Commodore 64 computer at this point. And I was, I was uh, still playing a lot of games on that. And it wasn't like crappy games. I mean, new games would come out and they would... There would often be a Commodore 64 port of those, and it was around this time was when they stopped doing that Commodore 64 port and uh, even stopped uh, supporting... Well, I mean, the problem was the Commodore Amigas, Atari STs, Apple II GSs. You had all these computers that were way better in terms of audiovisuals than these uh, DOS machines. Now, this was around the era when that started to change. You know, the cards had been out, but, you know, it takes a while for stuff to catch up. But this, this was sort of that turning point where things really started to shift towards uh, DOS if you were serious about gaming. So it kind of came out in a sort of transitional period. And I'm sure I'm not the only... You guys chip in, but I'm sure I'm not the only one that didn't even have an IBM PC at this this time. Uh, anyway, it was also an interesting time for SSI because they had this lucrative... Uh, you know, the goose that kept laying the golden eggs in the terms of this uh, venerable licensing... Uh, for all this A, D, and D stuff, TSR, you know, they were really cozy with SSI, who was better known for war games, you know, but they were able to secure, and if you guys watch Match Chat, you know, I've had all those guys on the show to talk about that. Uh, but, uh, at this point, though, that gold box engine that made them so famous, with the Pool of Radiance, Curse of the Azure Bonds, Dragonlance, the Buck Rogers, the Savage Frontier, all that stuff, uh, was the, the engine was too old, they had to do something, they put out the, uh, uh, what was it? Dark Queen of Kryn, I think, a year be before this. I think that was the last of their SSI's Gold Box games. Not even not, now. That I'm thinking about it. I'm not even sure that was them. Maybe they outsourced it. But anyway, I'm pretty sure that was them. Uh, and of course, they had Westwood Studios doing those uh, Eye of the Beholder sort of Dungeon Master style games. But this was something new. They wanted to take that Gold Box, basically take that Gold Box concept, revamp it. You know, slap a new coat of paint on it. Uh, put a new mouse-driven interface. I mean, that's another thing. Like, a lot of people didn't even have mice. <laughs> I mean, if you had an Amiga or an Atari, yeah, you had the mouse along, or a Mac. You know, you were used to using a mouse, but those, those poor old PC gamers, I mean, <laughs> they're like Lotus 1, 2, 3, I, I guess, with a keyboard only. Uh, so that was a big thing, like, oh, now we have a mouse. We're going to have a mouse control. Uh, so that, as we'll get into, it's a little bit clunky here, because they don't it's not like, it wasn't like they had this long tradition of, you know, how do you do a mouse on a PC? You look at Sierra games from the same era, they're still kind of clunky. Uh, but anyway, that was the big thing. Let's update the engine. Let's just focus on DOS. Let's not even do an Amiga port. Let's not even look at uh, Commodore 64. That's too old. No Apple II port. Uh, so that kind of that kind of sucked for us, but... You know what are you gonna do? I, I don't. I can understand why SSI wanted to jump on this, uh, you know, bandwagon. Uh, but that wasn't the only thing. They also wanted to come away from their what they were famous for, the the Forgotten Realms uh, franchise, sort of uh, in Dragonlance, a sort of classic. Uh, High fantasy, I guess you call it. The, the elves, the dwarves, pretty much what you think about when you think about Dungeons and Dragons. You know, what comes to mind. Uh, they wanted to come away from that, those sorts of settings. I guess they felt like that was kind of stale at this point. Uh, I don't know. What is it with people getting like... <laughs> you know, I could spend my entire gaming life in the Forgotten Realms... Just, I could have game after game after game set there. I'm happy. I don't feel like I'm getting bored. I, I don't feel like, oh my god, there's a dwarf with a Scottish accent and a beard. Oh, I'm so horrified by the cliche. Uh, 
uh, you know, that's that's what <laughs> that's what I like. That I wouldn't like fan if I didn't like that stuff. I wouldn't have gotten into fantasy. You know, it bugs me when people get into something and they want to change everything around. You know, uh, but, but that's another soapbox. Anyway, for whatever reason, TSR. You know, I guess they were also kind of bored with this. You know, they wanted to pump out something new, something different. You know, they have a lot of different things going on at this time. You know, I haven't ever even gotten really gotten into the Ravenloft uh, games. We should do that at some point. But, you know, like they had this horror theme going. Uh, they had the Spelljammer stuff going, kind of weird. I don't even know what you call that. Uh, but this uh, Dark Sun, and I didn't know this. I didn't know this until I was reading it here on the Wikipedia page. And, you know, I learn a lot of stuff from Wikipedia. Not ashamed. I'm not ashamed to say that I like Wikipedia. Uh, they actually reference me a lot on Wikipedia. Uh, but anyway, they say here, let's see if I can find the line again. Yes. Uh, oh, you know what? This changed since last, since yesterday. <laughs> uh, it says here, uh, this uh, Dark Sun box set uh, originally ran into 96 was one of TSR's most successful releases you know I'm pretty sure the wording of that changed a little bit I, I can't quite remember how but but anyway this was like a big deal for them uh, this Dark Sun thing at the time anyway was really popular and it introduced a couple of new concepts into uh, D&D stuff, stuff that would become staples like this idea of the meta plot out of the box so you know you get into this Dark Sun with your friends, and there'd be like ongoing stuff, uh, which was, was pretty cool. Uh, there's also no deities, no gods. Arcane magic is reviled. There's this kind of a global warming climate change type theme going on, nuclear holocaust, I don't know, uh, with the uh, the magic, kind of a wasteland scenario. Uh, psionics, mental powers, mutant stuff, I suppose, are extremely common. So we're, all of our characters are going to have these mental sort of tillot telepathic is that what you call that you know mental power <laughs> i don't know how else to put it <laughs> psionics <laughs> i guess there's why that, that i guess that's why there's a word <laughs> psionics <laughs> uh psychic there we go psychic powers uh, what else are they going to say about this uh, so anyway this thing had just come out like a couple of years ago 1991 it's exploding everybody's like dark sun dark sun this dark sun over here look you know there's dark sun uh, so it made a lot of sense for the you know, by the way, Dark Sun's Timothy P. Brown and uh, Troy Denning. Uh, so this comes out, it's a big deal. And, and SSI, you know, they got this cozy little relationship with, uh, you know, with TSR, you know, back when D&D &D was D&D. &D. So they just uh, said, hey, let's, you know, let's not do Forgotten Realms again. Let's do uh, this, this new and exciting Dark Sun setting. So I guess it worked out pretty well for them. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I don't... I would be curious if you played D&D &D back around this period. I'm, I want to know, like, were you playing Dark Sun? Were you into it? Or were you still with uh, Forgotten Realms? Or maybe you didn't even play D&D. &D. Maybe you maybe wanted to play the computer games. Alright, uh, so this game comes out. It's uh, produced by Brett Berry. Let's see who else is on here. Uh, Dave Shelley, who I've had on the show... Uh, he's one of the associate producers, Ricky White. If you look down here under game programming, we've got Keith Broers. And man, I don't know what it's going to take to get this guy on the show. I'm just like, Keith! <laughs> I need you, Keith! <laughs> get on the show, Keith! What in the hell? You know, but he's the same guy that did all the gold box programming. I mean, I'm sure he's like probably just, you know, staggering IQ, all that and maybe he's got maybe he's too busy working on like the next big thing. I don't know. Uh, I got to get him on because I'm desperate to talk to him. I've emailed you know back and forth a few times. Hey, look, look, Art Paul Barton. Well, you know this is a Barton here, Paul. I wonder if we're cousins, Paul. <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Maybe this is like some of my uh, maybe he's my cousin or something or uncle. Who knows? Anyway, maybe that's why the graphics are so good. You know, this artwork is fantastic because you know, there's a Barton involved. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, Laura Bowen. Uh, let's see who else is on there. Fred Butts. They're, they're the artist. You know, and I thought they had the music listed here. Because the music, to me, is, is one of the cool things about this game. Even though it's like on the early IBM PC DOS. 
I don't know. I guess they had the sound blasters and stuff back then, but you know, still has. To me, I love that that sort of uh, vintage sound of the MIDI or whatever you call that. You know, it doesn't sound. It doesn't have the uh, just a recorded orchestra. Uh, but look here at the uh, ooh FM voice design by George. Hey, there's the fat man. What is FM voice design? I'm not even sure what that means. <laughs> I'd like a different system. Uh, maybe there's a voice version of this. Uh, let's see. Music. Yeah, Ralph Thomas is the guy I wanted to uh, to focus on because I think he did a really good job. Ralph Thomas. Let's see. Why's Cooksey? What is... Uh, well, I don't know why Cooksey there is in parentheses. Oh, wow. Look at this. Look at this guy. Yeah, he did Spelljammer. Looks like he was doing some work for SSI. Oh, look. Eye of the Beholder 3. Yeah, he's working on the Stark Sun stuff. Silent Hunter. Let's see if I recognize any of the other. Uh, you remember this one? World of Aiden. Um, yeah, but anyway, he d he does a good job on the music, so I just wanted to give him make sure to get his name there before I forget it. Ralph Thomas. Uh, so anyway, that's a little bit about the uh, the background here. Oh, I didn't really talk about the uh, Dark Sun setting. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention about this setting. Because again, it's not one I'm super familiar with. I'm more of a, I've always been more of the computer guy, not the tabletop guy. But this setting, they talk about it here in this Wikipedia article. How it is uh, part of a, yeah, here it is, dying Earth subgenre. So I went down this rabbit hole, like, what are they? What is a dying Earth subgenre? That sounds cool. And it turns out, well, duh, you've read like half of these books. <laughs> Just, uh, they're talking there, of course, you know, D Jack Vance is who comes to mind. He's got a series of books that are really good. It's where they got the uh, AD&D &D magic system basically comes from that. Uh, he's a good writer. You don't really hear about him too much, but you should check him out. But it's also stuff like uh, Michael, some of Michael Moorcock's stories. H.G. Wells has a story. Uh, Lovecraft. But, you know, it's that kind of a, to me, it's like the Mad Max type world. So it's almost like Dark Sun. And some of you guys have played this more can, can tell me if this is accurate or not. But it, it seems kind of like a, like a Mad Max type world. But instead of being uh, like in modern times, like a modern era, then there's a nuclear holocaust and everything goes to hell. It's like, let's take that concept, but let's put it back in like Forgotten Realms era. And so the same sort of stuff happens, with, but with magic instead of bombs. Uh, you still end up with this kind of wasteland-like setting, but it's more uh, fantasy-based, and they don't have uh, the high-tech stuff like you would in a Fallout game. At least that's my kind of understanding here. And the more I think about it, that that's pretty cool setting. So I could see why people were drawn to this. All right, so that's enough about the background. Let's get this thing up and going. Okay, we are getting geared up here. Let's see, don't turn me off, don't turn that off. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I did want to uh, show you something else, though. <clears throat> now, if you get the game from GOG, again, which I recommend that you do, you're going to want to open up that file directory that it comes with and, and get the find these PDFs, because you will need these to look at. You know, maybe you're really awesome and you actually have a box copy and you can just pull out the manuals and maybe have the clue book there. I would I would keep those handy, you know, if you're new to the game because there'll be a lot of stuff that's not it's not in the game itself. It won't tell you. It's not like a tool tip. There's no uh, help menu you can go to and see all this stuff. Uh, so you're going to want to have this handy just so you can look stuff up. And, and plus, you know, this is back in the day when, <laughs> you know, this, this game probably came on, uh, the version I've got back there is on the CD-ROM, but I, I'm pretty sure that's like a late edition. Uh, I'm pretty sure this must have come out originally on a bunch of discs, so you'd be taking a long time installing it, so you could look through, they made these manuals, so there was like this, Jareth's Journal, so there was stuff in here basically you could read as you waited for that thing to install, so in you needed to read it. It wasn't just a, a, a frill, you know, a reference thing. I mean, there's important information in here you need to know. Like, you won't know unless you play Dark Sun a lot, I guess. You know, I had to look at, look at this to figure out, like, the classes. 
And they got some really cool uh, races in here. I'm still not quite sure how to pronounce this one. Moles? Moles? I mean, it's clear that they're trying to, to get at mules. You know, if you know about a mule, it's a donkey and a horse. <laughs> a donkey and a horse, when they have very... <laughs> when they love each other. <laughs> they produce a mule. And mules are pretty cool, but they... Uh, you know, they can't... Two mules, if they get together, well, it's, uh, there's no offspring. <laughs> so I guess that works out pretty well if you don't want uh, mule kids. Uh, anyway, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about anymore. Uh, but in this game, a mole, it's a half-dwarf, basically. Half-human. A crossbreed of humans and dwarves. And they're really tough. <laughs> they're always male. <laughs> usually the products... Moles are usually the products of the slave pits. So it's kind of like a super dwarf, basically. Pretty cool concept. Uh, let's see who else we got here. There's, a, oh, the Thry Cree. Now, I'll talk more about those, but those are just awesome. <laughs> they're always female. <laughs> yeah, but they're, they're uh, you know, I'll just, again, I'll hold off on that because I, I think that's probably the best part of the game for me is the Thry Cree. I mean, holy hell. Really cool. Uh, over here in character classes, we've got a lot of the normal stuff. I mean, fighters, rangers, come on. You've, you ever played Dungeons and Dragons? You know what that is. But there's a couple of new ones in here. And for the love of God or money, you know, I have read this crap. I shouldn't call it crap. I have read this manual. <laughs> True feelings coming out. <laughs> I, I can't tell what, like, to, to me, this just seems like gladiators are better fighters. So... Maybe I'm missing something here, but it just looks like, why would you not be a gladiator? You know, you can use all the weapons. You can use all the kinds of armor. You uh, you get this AC bonus. And this is something else if you're playing that, what passes for D&D &D nowadays. You know, you want like the uh, higher AC is a good thing, right? You want like a 15 AC. Uh, this is back using that old Thaco system. So you actually want a lower AC. So the, the lower the armor class is, the better. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know if that makes any more <laughs> sense than the way they're doing it now. I <laughs> I don't know. I kind of, kind of think I've always did think it was a little bit weird, like having a negative one. Used to used to disappoint me as a kid. Like, put on this armor and now it's negative? What? Uh, let's see what else. Uh, oh, they also have these preservers in the game. And that's like, you know, if you're uh, out in a boat, <laughs> you have a preserver with you. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny, man. I should have some more coffee. <coughs> Preservers. Those are basically mages. Uh, the Arcane and Mysterious Secrets of Magic. So I don't know why they're called Preservers. I guess maybe like they're preserving the the knowledge of magic. Because remember this world, they're like, uh, magic is reviled, I guess. So these are, it's almost like uh, forbidden knowledge and they're trying to preserve it. At least that's kind of the... You know, it almost sounds kind of like that, uh, oh crap, what's that book about the, uh, Canticles of Leibowitz? Now that's a good one. You know, read that book. It almost kind of reminds me of that a little bit. Uh, so basically, if you want a wizard or mage or whatever you want to call it, you want the preserver instead. And let's see, clerics are in here, but remember there's no gods. There's no deities, right? So what the hell is a cleric study? Uh, apparently now it's elements. Four elemental spheres, earth, air, fire, and water. And so you get one of these spheres. That's a pretty radical change. You know, it sounds kind of like the cataclysm in Dragonlance, you know, after the, the gods have left or abandoned, abandoned us, right? So we have to turn to these other things. This sounds more like a wizard to me, though. So I don't know what the hell is going on with clerics. And let's see, druids are here. I wonder how they've changed. I haven't played a druid in this game. Uh, clerics, no restrictions to weapons. They're not allowed to wear armor. <laughs> they don items again. Well, if you're so smart, Druid, you think you could put on some chain mail. Anyway, <clears throat> they can't turn undead. I guess they have some perks. I never liked Druids. I just never trusted those guys. You never really know what they're doing. Uh, thieves. Sion yeah, there's a Sionicist. So this is something else I didn't realize 
until I really got into this game, actually played it. <laughs> like, I just thought the psionicists were just a class, and you needed to be that class to have these uh, mind spells or whatever. Actually, as we'll see, all the characters have at least one of these uh, schools or disciplines, they call them. Psychokinesis, psychometabolism, and telepathy. So you basically get some abilities. Everybody gets these. But the uh, psionicist, <clears throat> you can have them all. So it's like if you really want to just focus totally on the mental powers, that's the choice. So I think that gives you some pretty good ideas. You know, this is like stuff we'd be talking about if we were installing the game right now. So <laughs> just pretend like it's installing. You're listening to the... <laughs> oh, those discs is rolling up. <clears throat> Yeah, there's our... I mean, look at... Don't you want this? You know, the manuals? Look at these pictures of monsters. Somewhere. Yeah, look at this. Ratman, baby. <laughs> uh, right, let's see. Does it say where these are? Treasure. Lair. Oh, my God. I don't, it's like looking at the back of a baseball card. I don't know what all this means. <clears throat> Does it say where you run into them? <clears throat> Ecology. So habitat. The Terry... The Tari... I'm just going to call them rat men. It's way more flattering. Uh, the rat men gather in small tribes living in sewers and garbage heaps. They move among these areas looking for food and items to protect the tribe. Wow. I really want to meet one of these guys. You Tari mate once a year. Wow. No wonder they're hostile. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like. I hope we all get to mate more than once a year, <clears throat> especially if you live in a. Well, maybe it's because they live in a garbage heap. You know, <laughs> that's do wonders for your social life. <laughs> oh God, we're getting off the off the rails here. Okay, enough of this manual. I just want to show you one other thing. And I swear I'm not just padding this video out, but you just you got to, but you got to appreciate the full package, right? So I've talked about this before, uh, the clue books. I normally say, what the hell are you doing? Don't, don't look at a clue book. Get off that hint side or walk through. You know, wait till you beat the game once, and then on your second playthrough, then you can load up the game Banshee and look at the maps and stuff. Or if you get stuck, you know, you, you come here to, uh, to figure this out. But that's not true of these clue books for SSI games, at least in my opinion. Uh, I, I really think about these clue books more or less as like the... Uh, like a modern game has a journal or bestiary, bestiary, I always call it bestiary. Uh, but it's tool tips, you know, little tips and tutorials and things that are built into the game. Okay, this is 1993. That's not really commonly practiced. Uh, instead, they expected you and they made, actually, they made more money. This is something awesome that you learned from Matt Chat. <laughs> These developers, these publishers, these studios made more money selling these clue books than they did on the games. A uh, reason being that people just pirated the games. You got that for free, but then you're like, oh, crap. I don't know what buttons to push. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you, you know, it, it cost a lot of money. You could go photocopy. Uh, you, they didn't have these on like a, you know, there's, there's no good way to scan this back at, at the time. Uh, so you just would have to photocopy it and mail it. You know who's going to go to that? You might as well just buy the uh, the manual <clears throat> or the clue book. Uh, but anyway, the the clue books were great for them. They made a lot of profit. There's a lot. Basically, what I'm saying is there wasn't as much piracy going on with the clue books as uh, so they could sell those, make a lot of money, make some of the money back. Now you know. Uh, but also. What I was saying is this is uh, more like that tutorial. <clears throat> it's more like the little guides, the tips. You know, in a modern game, you would load up a map of an area, and it would, or it might have a quest log, right? And it would tell you, like, what quest you're on and where you might go. And They kind of gently nudge you in the right direction in the game. Uh, but you don't have that in these early games. That's what the clue book is for. So a lot of times you're playing something, you get stuck. You're like, what the hell? Well, it's because you... You know, they expect you to have the clue book, and you can look and see something like this. You know, this is basically, if you look at World of War, uh, World of Warcraft, you open up that quest log, the map, and it's got this information on it. So they basically build the clue books into the games nowadays, because they're lame like that. Uh, at this time, you had to have this clue book, but you had to pay up. 
had to buy this. <laughs> but it was okay because it was fun and like to look through this and, and figure out like where do I need to go. And this flavor text here, and usually these are well written. I mean, they actually had people proofread it, you know, grammatic, uh, make it grammatical. <laughs> so don't feel bad at all. You know, don't feel like you're cheating by looking at a clue book. Matter of fact, I think you're kind of missing out on, on a lot of the fun if you don't have the clue book. Uh, but anyway, enough of that. Let's load the game. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> Let's get this party started. Uh, I made a few little tweaks to this. I made my DOS window a little bigger. Might have to adjust it again. Uh, you, can, you can change that stuff in the conf settings. Uh, or you could just play it full screen. But, you know, I kind of like the windows. All right, let's get it going. Ah, this is side, man. Look at that. <laughs> the colors are like cycling. It's so awesome. AD and D. Listen to that music, too. Can you hear it? It's like a little drum. Dark Sun, Shattered Lands. A fantasy role playing epic volume one. Just look at the, even that title screen is awesome, man, with the, the fire and the, like the way they wrote Dark Sun. It's almost like metal. <clears throat> There's that music again. And check this out, man. You know they're proud of this <laughs> space, the final frontier. <laughs> okay, here we go. It's coming right at you. Oh, no, it's a knife. Ah! You have to explain the symbolism here. So a knife goes into the ground. The middle becomes a gym with a dragon in it. Now it's a planet. Now it's back in space. Now it becomes all cruddy looking like some kind of salmon ball that's been in the fridge too long. I don't know. It's everything is... I guess this is the cataclysm. It's, it's yellowy. <laughs> it's mustard world. <laughs> Welcome to mustard world. Let's see, the once lush and beautiful world of Dark Sun is now bleak and deadly. Sorcerer kings rule the city-states, crushing life and freedom in their quest for power. Yes. In Draj, slaves feed the power of the Sorcerer King in an endless dance of death. And those dances of death, folks, those are the only dances I like to do. That's my preferred style of dancing. I'm sure you would agree. You see what I'm talking about? Oh. Listen to that. So we say that's Ralph or uh, the Fat Man. I don't even know. But whoever did it, good job. All right, enough uh, messing around. Uh, so we can start a game, and this will just put us in there with a default party. Very lame if you do that. Uh, you might do it once just to see what they put together for you, kind of a recommended thing. But I think the fun is creating your own characters. I've never... Like, what's your hurry? Slow down, enjoy the game. Damn. You know, you spent ten bucks on this. <laughs> My mouse is just, like, totally weird. All right. Uh, an active character. And this is kind of an exercise in early 90s back before they had any standards for like mouse <laughs> interfaces so everything's going to be a little bit weird like do i right click do i left click there's no mouse wheel you know it's kind of moves funny uh but anyway you get you get used to it so here's our character creation screen now this is kind of weird here if you want to change the class what you have to do is deselect because it automatically it tries to be helpful it has just fighters selected there already so you're like oh, why can't I click well you have to deselect the fighter now you can click on whatever uh, not probably not the best uh, UI design decisions ever but you know it is what it is you just have to know that and also kind of weird is this, this die here in the middle you like flip it doesn't do anything. You're like, what the hell? I mean, you're on the phone with like tech support. SSI. Can I speak to Joel Billings, please? Joel. What the hell, Joel? What the hell? <laughs> There's like nobody there because the line's busy. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's just bad design. Uh, you can get around it if you click on this 
change to. Okay, I I I, <laughs> I guess she's wearing like a like a bikini. <laughs> I don't know, a thong, leather thong. We'll just assume that's what that is. Uh, now it works. Okay, so I just kind of, you know, this this doesn't bode well. It gets better though. <laughs> Uh, let's just flip through our options here. You know, keeping in mind this is like a Mad Max fantasy style, so we're not gonna, you know, people aren't gonna be pretty necessarily. We've got a male half elf here named Tashar. Got a Mistra, female half half elf. Everybody looks nice and real muscular. Got the, the biceps. This, this guy was half giant. Yeah, I think we're gonna want a half giant. You know what, though? I'm just going to skip... This Zulak. Female half-giant. Huh. <laughs> a male half like I am too, John. I think he's got like a scroll case or a big bone there. I don't know what... What... <laughs> uh, yeah, moving on. Um... Oh, there's those, those mulls or mules. Remember, this is the half dwarf. He looked kind of kind of badass, actually, doesn't he? Uh, there we go. The Thry Cream. Now, this is my favorite character in this game. I mean, they look like big grasshoppers, I guess. Kind of insect-like, but man, they are going to be kicking some butt. And I looked in uh, some of the clues and walkthroughs you could find online. I just kind of browsed those, and they were saying, like, don't pick a Thrykreen, because they can't wear armor. You know, whatever. It's got an exoskeleton! God. Anyway, let's go ahead and make this... I don't, again, I don't know why you would be a fighter when you could be a gladiator. And then we have our choice of uh, side disciplines. I'll just go with the first one. I don't... I haven't played this enough yet to really know which which of those is the best option. Uh, so we can just go with these random rolls if we like. It's usually what I like to do. Or, you know, if you're feeling insecure, you can get in here and, like, just manually raise everything to maximum and cheese the game. You know, SSI had this weird thing in all their games about, well, you, you played the tabletop game and you have a character that you play with your friends. You know, of course you're going to want to create that exact character in your role, in your computer version. I don't know, who did that? Did anybody do that? I, I don't know. I guess they thought people would do that. Uh, maybe I'm weird. I, I, didn't, I couldn't care less. I just thought it was pretty cool as a kid. I'm like, yeah, my guys got 20 everything. Okay, we're done. Oh, can I... Yes, you can name them yourself, but I kind of like the alto names. Gun. That's a proper Thrykree. Remember, these are all female. Oh, look at this. I, I, I love that. Okay, let's get another character. We only get four. You know, it's kind of like Eye of the Beholder. We don't get that big old honking seven character party. All right, so we got already got a gladiator. You know, one guy I looked at, he just says, go with four gladiators. You know, that's all, I guess he's content with that. Doesn't like a variety, but don't you know variety is the spice of life? You gotta have, well, you got you can't just have all gladiators. Give me a break. Uh, so you gotta play around with some of these other options. Why don't we do a, uh, let's see, not a druid. Hell no. Uh, I, I'm kind of thinking maybe ranger. Yeah, let's do the ranger. That guy doesn't look like a ranger, though. I want one of those giants. <laughs> Female dwarf. You know, I just don't know about Yabala. I'm kind of tempted. You know what? Oh, she can't... She can't be a ranger. I guess because she's a dwarf. That's... That's, that's racist. <laughs> oh... Let's get the uh, the uh, the female giant. This will be fun. Let's see, fighter. Yeah, okay. She could be a ranger. Zulak. Zulak. Strength twenty-one. 
Female half giant. Chaotic good ranger. How awesome is that? And I also get some clerical uh, clerical magic. This is weird though. It's not, I'm not, I can't understand these. So it's a cleric, but it has elemental spells. I don't know. Zulak, are you more into water, fire, earth, or air? You know, I don't know. How about earth? <laughs> no, not earth! <laughs> Too bad. It's gonna get dirty. Yeah, dirty ranger, dirty half giant ranger. Always playing in the dirt. Okay, we got our big tough guys out in the front ranks. Got a gladiator there, fighter, I mean the ranger. I think we're going to want to go with this preserver. Who looks like a preserver? I can, let's see if our dwarf can be the Esther. Esther! <laughs> not, not one of the members of the Hero Club for Female Dwarves. Siren assist? Oh, it can't be a preserver. Ah! Well, I'm sorry. I guess I'll have to save her for the uh, Sionicist roll. What is this? Ham Hamon. Hamon. Hamilton Wheat. Well, he can be. He's an elf. Now, another thing you notice here, we can multi-class the hell out of this stuff. You can have up to three of these classes, and a lot of people, that's what they do. They pick... <coughs> Multi-class everything. I, I never like multi-classing. It's like those kids that want a double major. And just like, what are you trying to prove? Just just pick something. <laughs> uh, let's see. He looks like a telepath. Me tab. Do the me tab. Metabolism, I think, for the preserver. Makes sense. All right, we got one more shot at this. What's it going to be? What is it going to be? I, I'm thinking Sionicist. Which one looks like a Sionicist? Who is a Sion? No. No. Sean Boy. Alright, Sean Boy. I'm about to choose your destiny. You know, maybe I can multiclass him as a Sionicist thief because I don't have a thief in the party. Even though I don't really like the multi-classing thing. Eh, what the hell. Get outside your comfort zone. He's a male mule Sionicist thief. Alright, we're good to go. Got our party here. I guess we can click to see what their what their items are. And I gotta say, these uh, this mouse control sucks. <laughs> I don't know if it's just that I got a fairly fancy mouse. But man, it is just like on a hair trigger here. I have to just be so careful. I feel like a surgeon, you know, as I'm moving this mouse around. Because if I, any normal movement, it just goes nuts. Uh, it could be because I'm in a window instead of full screen. I, I don't know. I kind of messed around with the settings a little bit. This is as good as I could do. All right, so our party's created. Let's go ahead and start the game. Turn the game. What is that control? Make Hammond leader. Oh, that's how you do that. <laughs> Man, I'm still learning the little buttons on this game. Okay, where is return to game? And I think we just start. By order of the mighty and omnipotent King Tech Tuk Title. Oh, try saying that three times fast. All slaves fit to carry a sword, so mages don't need to apply. Shall fight in the arena. Or should I say preserver? Death shall be the oh. I think the gist of that was We're screwed. <laughs> hey, there's my dwarf. Did I, did I get the dwarf? I don't think I got the dwarf. Eh, sorry. Now I feel bad. That's pretty cool though. I like that halberd. 
I always loved halberds. Like if I was in the Middle Ages, man, I would want like a that halberd. It's got that long shaft on it, so you could just like stick them from a long ways off. And it's better than just a spear because you got like an axe and a pike and a. And it's like a Swiss Army. Was that the Swiss that carried those things? All right, are we actually in the game yet? <laughs> Uh, this day, the mage Kelgor would battle a fearsome rampager. Watch and enjoy. Do not worry, Mkgan. Your turn will come soon. Stand back and watch the battle. So this is what we get instead of that. Instead of that tutorial, we we'll just get to watch a little demo here. Check out those awesome spell graphical effects. Look at those slags, man. I'm gonna fight. I want to fight. <laughs> Defiler. Who was that? Like a fireball? So we're looking at Kelgor, I guess, in action. He kicked ass. Uh, Gladiator, step forward. I think this is our time. Now, I gotta admit, I played this the first time. I just died the first battle, and it was that was it. Wiped my party out. I had to start over. This game doesn't play. Well, there's one grass sniper. Now, there's a ways to move. Neither one are very good. <laughs> you can uh, hold the bounce button down, kind of almost like you're playing something like Diablo. Not nearly as smooth. Or you can try to use the arrow keys. You know, and I don't know how to move diagonal either. Oh, I guess if you turn off the... Oh, okay. Just learned something new! You, could, you can't teach an old Matt new tricks. So if you turn off the numb lock, numb lock, I hate it when I get numb locked, then you can move diagonally. So that problem is solved. That is awesome. Now, if you want to change this mouse cursor, you use the mouse wheel. <coughs> There's no mouse wheel. This is 1993. No, we have to right click to cycle through the various mouse cursors. Totally awkward, but what are you going to do? This is... 1993. Before you is a handful of gladiators. Watch and be entertained as they fight to the death of the with the denizens of our land. That's a weird thing for an announcer to say. Before you is a handful of gladiators. <clears throat> a handful. I'll give this guy a handful. Monster trainer. Release monster trainer. Release your horde. Man, I want a horde. If you guys ever come to my place, I'm going to release my horde on you. So just be ready for that. Oh, look, the slig. See, like, right off that last time, <laughs> that, that that damn slig came out just <laughs> death. Okay, Sean Boy. Now, see, I don't know yet which one of my guys is which. Is that Sean Boy? Yeah, there's Sean Boy. So you click on him, and you could say... Like in the gold box games, guard. So he'll just kind of sit there and be ready. You know, and then if a monster comes close to him, then he'll punch him. Uh, or, I don't want to do that. I guess you could just wait until the you know, turn-based combat is over. Or you could just skip your turn, which would be a very dumb thing to do. Or we can actually take an action. Now let's see, if I right-click, I can go through, I can look at him. Let's see what that does. Try to talk to him. Slig! Level 3. None of these options will work yet. Now what if I want to cast a spell or do something like that? I have to click here on the inventory. There's probably a better way to do this. But it's uh, right here. And then you have these options you can cycle through. So these are my various psionic abilities. Or I can click that. And if I had, say, a mage class and I can look at those options but we're just uh, the psionic <laughs> so let's just take a look here superior invisibility and I I could either look this up in the manual but here they actually do include some of the details here not not as much as that little baseball card but we can see what happens let's see makes the psionicist nearly undetectable in combat it is dispelled as this well that's worthless I kind of want to attack I guess that would be good if you're, you know, getting clubbed to death. Whoa! What else we have? 
Mind blank. So some of these sound just like the spells from the earlier games. I guess they just... Uh, <coughs> most of this is about protection, looks like. Unlike other defensive modes, Mind Blank costs nothing to maintain. So I guess if we're up against another Psionicist, we could turn that on. What is the... I keep saying hold person. What's, where's that coming from? Wait! Whoa! Uh, okay, cast a spell. Was it just my imagination, or did it keep saying "whole person"? I don't. You know, I would say there's some, there's uh, no bugs in the game, but clearly we have uh, <laughs> the Thrike Green. <laughs> they wanted to carry that theme of bugs, you know, throughout the whole package. Let's see, Sonic Blast sounds like a damager. Let's see, tricks an opponent into thinking it has lost 80% of its hit points. When it loses 20%, it falls unconscious. <clears throat> okay, I don't quite understand that. Sounds damaging. Then we have our kinetic spells. It's a detonate. Ballistic. Ballistic attack. And that cost 14... What is this? 14... 13, 14... 5 PP don't know what the PP, psychic power maybe, sonic power. Allows the character to hurl a small object at high speed which inflicts one to six points of damage. Uh, inertial barrier. Halves damage from breath weapons, missiles, acid gas, and ice storms. A focused explosion inflicts one to ten points of damage to any creature within its area of effect. We'll go back to that. So that's an AOE at level 1. That's pretty neat. Metabolic, metabolic, life draining. This must be like the evil side. <laughs> the evil side of the fools. Uh, drains up to 6 hit points and temporarily adds it. So that's kind of a vampiric touch. And then we can check our inventory. So our AC is 6. We got a long sword. Looks like some leather chest armor, a leather sling. Look, he's wearing a sling. A bone long sword. Long sword made out of bone. Okay. You know what? I think I'm just going to hit him with my bone. So I have to click on the, the sword icon and... Now it's Zulak's turn. I think that's... Is this Zulak? My half-giant 10,000 foot giant badass. Let's see. I want to check out her inventory. She's got a, another bone long sword, a leather arm armor. Whoa. She also has a some arrows and a bow. So she's you know, Rangers come pretty pretty well equipped, looks like. Okay, let's let's just see what happens if I just click with a 14. So I don't have to go to that sword every time. That's neat. Alright, here is my Thrykreen. Now check this out. God. Check out how bad. She's just gonna... Boom, boom. Oh, she killed him, see? She's still got movement and another attack. All right, she missed that time, but I've seen her just like go through two of these guys. They're just deadly grasshoppers. You ever see that terrible uh, movie with the giant grasshoppers? I think MST3K did a version of it. I can't think of the name of it, but <laughs> it's like these giant grasshoppers. The locusts, I think they call them. It's pretty silly. I always think about that, though. If you ever seen, uh, was it Hell Valley, Damnation Alley, I think, uh, with the giant grasshoppers? Is that a giant grasshopper? Anyway, if it's a post-apocalyptic setting, you have to have giant grasshoppers. That's just a thing. I don't know. There's just something about a punching grasshopper I can really get get behind that. Sean, boy. 
You know what? I might not survive this. You might be looking at another big epic fail. That's why it's taking me so long to do this video. I keep making a party and dying. It's too embarrassing. Yeah, like, only one hit point left. Let's see, is this somebody with some healing? But whose turn is it? Uh, let's see, Hammond. You know, maybe I can get to my menu here. Yeah, here we go. <clears throat> let's see, we gotta do something about this guy. And whose turn is it? Grease, magic missiles. Two level one spells to cast. I don't think any of these are gonna help. Life draining. Okay, Hammond. Which one is Hammond? Oh crap! Oh, I didn't mean to do that. All right, that one's dead. That sucks. Let's see, Sean boy. I probably should have just wrote down like what these classes are, cause I. Okay, this guy's got the spells. Let's see, does he have any, like, healing magic? I don't think any of that's gonna work. I'm just gonna try to kill this stuff as quick as possible. There might be a way to, like, revive that guy or <clears throat> bring him back. We'll see. If I just, if I, as long as I don't wipe, maybe we're okay. But you see what I'm talking about. And this game doesn't play. You screw up. Oh, good hit. Zula. I guess the ranger, right? She's got some cleric power. The ranger has some abilities, right? Maybe I'm thinking about my other character. Okay, anyway. I always hate it when one of my characters gets unconscious. I mean, it's better than death, but still. It's not what you want to see. <laughs> The crowd yawns. A few are still awake to applaud. Oh, sorry for the delay. I was just resting my eyes. I get it. Attention gladiators. Go back to the pens to heal your wounds. The citizens of Hadraj are impatient with delays. I wouldn't suggest waiting for the monsters to die of old age as an entertaining tactic. Look on the bodies if you want. It won't help you. You'll still die. So I can yell something back at this guy, but I have found from very painful experience, you're better off not. <laughs> All he's going to do is send more monsters after you. Okay, let's see if I can do some healing. Now I thought, let's see, this would be this would be a good way to do that. So it's my gladiator, my ranger, observer, and the sonic thief. So I guess this ranger... There's some cleric abilities, I thought, but I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I'm just wrong. <laughs> that has been known to happen. Maybe rangers don't get their uh, spells for a while. All right, so now the time is kind of ticking because there will be more monsters come out. So what I, what I could do here and what I probably will do is just go back inside and rest up and come back. Because I got to, as you'll see, I need to, do this process a few times and I don't want to get into another battle quite yet. Uh, so what I can do, I can just go back into this uh, this pen and what we'll want to do is rest up, come back, fight some more of the arena, do that four or five times and that will uh, give us some experience points and some better equipment but also move the plot along Let's see. <clears throat> Ooh, look at this guy. <laughs> He's on the same pins! And Kurzak! Leader of the guards! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell you, if I saw a guy looking at me like that, I'd get back right back out to the arena. <laughs> I'm not going to go to sleep. <laughs> no. Uh, anyway, Kurzak! Leader of the guards. Leader of the guards. Follow me. I'm here to lead you to your cell. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, please, Kurzak. Lead me to my cell. What do you say? Help me escape or I'll kill you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to say that. Uh, tell me about your job. 
Who is the half giant? I know we can't actually see a half giant, but it's 1993. Uh, how many have many slaves escaped? How well guarded are the exits? Yes, we don't want to be, uh, we couldn't be less obvious here about our goals. Let's see, tell me about your job. That sounds like a very Ultima like question. Very JRPG like question. What's your job? Guard work is pretty routine. I could take them to the arena. Sometimes I bring them back to the pins. It beats working on the pyramid. I went to college for four years. That's, <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> Let's see. All right, who's the half giant? I don't see a half giant, but I'll just assume. Oh, that's the monster trainer. His name is Leg Crusher. He's not too bright, but he's good with monsters. He, he just crushes it on the legs, man. Uh, working on the pyramid. Yes, that's where most of the people are working. <clears throat> Who is... Why is the pyramid being built? Like an Egyptian theme? The pyramid is being built for the Sorcerer King. Everything's been slowed down since his disappearance, but that's all you're entitled to know. Gua'uld. Oh, have many slaves escaped? I'm guessing nada. No one escapes. Keep in line or else. I gotta, I'm pretty sure I know what the or else. <laughs> get moving. I gotta get back to work standing around. <laughs> okay, he's gone. Oh, look. There's our... This is our half giant. This must be Leg Crusher. No, oh, don't fight him. <laughs> talk to him. Where's the talk? And they made that an easy screw up to make. Let's see, Leg Crusher. Talk. It's Kurzak you want to talk to. I'm just a monster driver. What am I fighting next? I don't know, it's too early to tell. Arr. I guess they don't get a very good dental plan here in the arena. This is kind of... You know, I wonder what these are. Are these like the gladiators who have... Oh. You know, that's another thing. If you accidentally click too fast, you miss out on the dialogue. That can be tricky. See, I'll... Come get you when it's time for your next fight. If you want to fight before that, knock on the door. Uh, so we can keep going back and get more experience points. and re You know, rest up, go fight some more monsters. So we will do that a couple times. I think we need to do that five times, actually. To get to the next plot point. Looks like there's a door there. There we go. Door. <laughs> The door is locked. Uh, so unfortunately, you know, the interface, I'm not going to keep going on about it. It is a bit clunky. You just have to deal with it. It does get better. But man, it's kind of annoying too. There we go. A haystack. <laughs> this, for whatever reason, you can click on this one. Maybe you should search it. Search through the haystack. Yes or no? Yes. You don't find anything of interest. Oh. I wonder if that's random or you just... Oh. Reaches her hand into the haystack and comes out with a piece of a pot. What is that piece of the pot? Well, go back to the... I want my pot. Look. Get the pot. <laughs> Pick it up. <laughs> What's the pick up button? Is that it? Man. I'm going to call that help line in a minute. Broken pot. Is that worth anything? I. No info. I'm guessing that's just a worthless item. I don't know for sure. But we have it. You know, it looks like I could search it again. I wonder how many times you can search. You don't find anything. Keep at it. <laughs> Two hours later. You don't find anything. 
you know, if this was a Sierra game or a Lucas game, they would have to put the some, some kind of needle joke in there. So I don't see. No, don't look at me. All right, nothing in that one. Hours of gameplay, tens of hundreds of hours. There's another haystack. Yes. Comes out with a small bug. Ah, uh, like a little baby. What are they doing in this haystack? A couple of thrycreed. Well, I guess they're always female, so I'm not sure how that works. <laughs> and oh. Ugh. I'm not even going to read that. That's disgusting. You know, sad part is, I was like, where is it? I'll see if it's better than my armor. <laughs> yeah, might as well. Go ahead. Just keep searching. An old table leg. Man, I'm finding all sorts of stuff in this. Let's have a look at that old table leg. It's a wooden club. I can't figure out if these Thrykreen are better off with weapons or without, because it looks like it says 1d6 plus 2, and there's some stuff going on in parentheses, and I have no clue what that's about. I guess she's got dual attacks or something. So it looks like, to me, that does the same damage as not having a weapon. Right? So, I don't know. 1d6 plus 2... 1d6 plus 2. I'm just going to assume that I'm okay without a weapon at the moment. Whoa, crudely made bone needle. And I got 10 experience points. Man, I love it when stuff like that happens. It's just, I love stuff like this. Wait, what did she get? A gem or something? What was I don't see anything in the inventory. Maybe I have to pick it up. Yeah. One more time. I know you guys are just on the edge of your seats. Hey, some coins! It's like the haystack that just keeps on giving here. You know what? While well, I'm thinking about it. Yeah, my character's okay. That's good. Uh, let's see. How do I save the game? <laughs> you always want to know. There we go. How to save... Center on the leader, overhead map. Here we go. Good hay. Man, I tell you, when you're just rolling in the hay. Search through it? Yeah. Okay. Maybe when you says that, it means that there's nothing more to be found. That little bug. Little junior. Gonna grow up to be like, Mom! Uh, now somewhere here there's a uh, what's this Merlon I talk to Merlon hello there good to see you please forgive my appearance I've been in here a while <laughs> what well, he's he's carefully he's shaven his hair looks nice he's got a nice accessory yeah he just looks really rough man whoo uh, what do you say? I'm mc to gun. It's a pleasure, m to gun. <laughs> Let's talk escape. Can you help me? See, I don't know if I want to necessarily go around being like, hey, we want to break out of here. Everybody. <laughs> uh, I doubt it. I'm not much for concocting ideas. I'm sorry you feel that way. Well, that kind of got awkward. Let's go on. What the? What is that? That's what I love about these old pixely games. She's like, I don't know what the hell that is down there, man. I, maybe a piece of chicken or something? And a, is that another <laughs> loincloth? Is it a duck? <laughs> like a little puddle of uh, jello? <sighs> Search the Scar's henchman. Doc to the boss. He's across the hall. You know you're not doing too well in life if your name is 
somebody else's henchman. You know, you need to set your career goals a little bit higher. You need to respect yourself a little bit more. <laughs> Man, look at the size of that A stack. Oh, I can't search it. Oh, gotta be all kinds of goodies in there. Okay, another henchman. Mr. Hinch. They even look alike. Okay. Oh, look at this guy. He's got his own little candelabra. Oh, I can search that. What can I do with this candle? Nothing. I can't seem to do anything to it. You know, you wouldn't mistake this for one of those, what is it, Ultima 7, where you can basically take that candelabra and combine it with like 17 other things and make like a, uh, a loaf of bread and a candle factory. <laughs> I can make the bed, though. Take that, Lord British. You can make the bed. Everything's interactive. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, here's Scar. Level 7. Now, this is the dude I wanted to talk to. Now, he's going to help us break out of here. See, I don't know you. You must be the new gladiators. I'm Jackie Gleason, and I run these pens. Don't cross me, and there won't be any trouble, understand? Maybe after a couple more visits to the arena. Wink, 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 wink. We'll talk. Well, guess what I have to do? Go visit the arena a couple more times. And that ought to be your standard for talking to people, right? I, I don't want to talk to you. Go, go to the arena a couple times. Then I'll talk to you. you know, don't, don't leave a comment on this video until you've been to the arena a couple times. Then you can make a comment. Only then. Nothing in that stack. Yeah, I gotta say though, searching haystacks is a lot more fun than I ever thought it would be. Now, now that they kind of gave me that, they kind of gave me that little reward, you know. Now I got, now I got to search every haystack. Look at that one. Oh, it's a big one. A haystack. I'd laugh if there was like some monster that popped out of here. Search through the haystack. You don't find anything? Oh, come on. Come on. There's just no way there's this big of a haystack. Could it be that there's nothing in it? You know, let's, let's make somebody else the leader. Look at her. That's our mage, right? Or, or our preserver. Let's have, uh, let's have him search it. Searching the haystack? Yes. Oh, what's in my... Hello! Whoa! <laughs> hey! <laughs> hey, hey, hey. What is she doing? Man, you just... Don't know. <laughs> These pixelated graphics. <laughs> it's like it's censored because it's so pixelated. Probably a good thing. Let's see, go all. Hello, who are you and what do you want? I'm Himmel. Yep, I'm Himmel. It's nice to meet you, Hammond. I'm Galal. Why are you... <laughs> what is all this straw for? <sighs> okay. Hey, what's it for? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Uh, it's what we sleep on. Oh. Okay, that's <laughs> what they sleep on. I, was, I guess that explains that. I, I wasn't sure what I'd walked in on here. Uh, Dredge's gladiators may be respected, but we still sleep on the cold ground. Um, have you fought in the... Let's see, why are you in here? I stole a loaf of bread to feed my family. You, know, you go to a prison, everybody says that. They were starving. I had no other choice. A neighbor turned me in for the reward money. His family was starving too. Also got a TV. Uh, how long have you been in here? Have you fought in the arena? Let's see, how long have you been in here? I've been here for a couple of months. Wow. Who else is in the slave pens? The only person I've talked to is Trusty. <laughs> Hello, I'm Trusty. 
Not not a trustee, just trustee. Are there many guards? I'm not sure. I was brought here by Kurzak, and I saw a few guards in the guard station to the north. Have you fought in the arena? After I was arrested, I was immediately thrown into the arena with five other gladiators to fight a pack of screamer beetles. I was the only survivor. Luckily, I haven't fought since. <laughs> Something like, <laughs> luckily for the other gladiators. Uh, you just, let's see, what glad, what creatures do gladiators fight? Initially, all you fight are screamer beetles and slings. Later, they threw some wild moles and renegade halflings. Hmm. Those renegade halflings, you have to really watch, watch out for mountain stalkers. Okay, has anyone ever escaped from here? Has anyone escaped? I think I... Oh, my head! The pain! Get that response a lot. Uh, let's see, are you all right? I don't know. I feel fine now. <laughs> I don't get that response a lot, man. What happened? A sharp pain went searing through my head. Okay. Every time I think, my headache gets worse. You know, I think we've all had days like that. And Hammond, you're not making it any better. Okay, look, you see that little ring on the ground? This is something that... You know, I'm going to save you a lot of pain here. I didn't have the benefit of a Matt Chat video to watch. I'm the guy making the video. Uh, I'm like, how do you rest? How do you camp? You know, and I looked. At, I even looked in the manual, and it said, just go to this little hemorrhoid. I'm sorry, uh, this little ring, and uh, click on it, and you can rest. But you know, I didn't do anything. But it's it's that pixel thing again. So you have to. You can't click in the middle. You have to like click on the actual hemorrhoid, and it rests, and it's real quick. See it? It's like party rest. <laughs> but now. They're back up to full snuff. Look at that. Let's go ahead. Hammond, get up here. It's your turn in the arena. So time is up, unfortunately. I don't have time to search these haystacks. They want me to get back out there. But you know what? I just, I got to search at least twice. Nothing. So we'll have to go fight again. Then we can come back. Did you stash the stuff in the haystack? Quiet! Someone's outside the door. Is it time to break out yet? What am I? What do I walk in? Shh! Not yet. So I need to talk to these guys, but it sounds like I need to go back to the arena before. Uh, good. Uh, yeah. You don't want to send leg crusher after you. The crowd is waiting. Get moving! Get moving! Ah. Geez, let me look at the map. Uh, game options. Overhead maps. Let's see, where am I? You know, this map doesn't like tell you where. It just shows you like dots where people are, but you know, it's a lot better than nothing. So I need to go up and to the right. There we go. Give us a good show. Draw the battle out enough to make it interesting. You know, this is a scenario that comes up in a lot of books, doesn't it? You know, I just got finished reading The War of the Twins. Dragonlance, and you know, there's this exact scenario. Alright, so we're ready for round two in the arena. Yeah, so maybe this time we'll do a little better. Hey, look at this guy up here, who's that? What do you have to say for yourself, Gladiator? Oh, that's the announcer guy. Bravery comes easily from behind walls. I am prepared to die. I hope you are too. I spit in the face of Tech Tip Titley himself. You will, I'm guessing I probably don't want to say these things. That is good, however, the monster should concern you. But hey, you're feeling kind of macho. You can step it up a notch. 
Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna map out a little bit. Wouldn't it be nice to scroll around a little bit, and zoom out a little bit? Citizens of Raj, behold these gladiators as they fight in melee with a terrible beast that exists beyond our walls. Thank you, King Tectictitle, for his protection. Hail, our Lord Master, the great Tectictitle, whose protective wings smother us all in their malignant glory. This message brought to you by Tectictitle, who supports this message. <laughs> okay, let's see. Here come the monsters. What the hell? Oh, so you're just one guy, but when you get into combat, they spread out. Okay, let's see if we can do this a little bit smoother this time. See, Zulak is... Who's Zulak? Is that Zulak? <laughs> ah, which one is Zulak? Is that Sh Sean Boy, Hammond? Okay, Zulak is my giant. You know, I should have just named these characters like Giant and <laughs> Cricket. <laughs> That's something I could re Okay, Zoo likes her Giant, so I'll just send her right into to combat. Oh, look, they're using ranged attacks. Let's send her old Grasshopper. Yeah, maybe I could do a little tactical thing here. Let's see, move, keep moving. Okay, yeah, I'll see if I can get her to, you know, flank some of these guys. She still got some movement, good. Boom, right in the back. Look at all those attacks, you know, why would, you seem like you just have to have a grasshopper in your party. Okay, and Sean Boy is our... Few character, Sonic Thief. Now let's try out some of those psionic powers. What the hell? Let's see what we got. Invisibility, mind blank, psionic blast. Let's try that one. And let's see if we can aim it at this guy. <laughs> Did it do anything? <laughs> and this is our mage. No, don't do that. Probably a hot key to like bring up your spells. So you cast a spell. Mage. Why are these all X'd out? That's weird. Everything is X'd out for some reason. What is the deal? Oh. Hey man! Why are your spells crossed out, sir? Do not know. Where is he? He's got 38 points. You were hit. Oh, I guess if you take some damage, they threw a rock at him, so I guess he can't cast anything. Why don't we try out that guard, then? Oops, no. Go back. <laughs> guard. So that way he won't attack unless he's a... If somebody tries to creep up on him, he'll attack. Ooh, man, those rocks are doing some damage. Two, two, come on. See, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's still got some attacks left. Ah, the stupid Hammond. Ah, you always got that one guy in your party. <laughs> ah, keeps getting hit, so I guess he's not worth anything. Won't be able to cast again. Look at that. Let's see. Does he have a ranged weapon? Okay, we got a sling. I guess we could use a sling. Let me throw a rock at you. See how you like it. Yeah, four points of damage. And this one is our... Let's see. Cast a spell. Nope, can't cast either. But he's got a sling and a knife. And he's a thief, so we might be able to do a backstab. See if we can backstab. Almost like a backstab. Yeah. Oh, 20 points. All right, Hammond. Can you cast a spell now? Wait, that's Sean, boy. What in God's name? Hammond! 
You cast a spell. Why is it going to Sean Boy? This is weird. Okay, craft. Yeah, I want to craft a weapon. Flesh armor. Okay, mage. Fog cloud, stinking cloud. He's already got level 2 spells? Grease, magic missile, shield. I wonder how the shield works in this game. Just lasts for, for a battle. <clears throat> Sometimes shield just lasts for a, one battle. Let's go ahead and cast it though. It's <laughs> probably, probably going to be necessary. What happened? Did you get hit? You cast it on somebody else? I don't know what the hell's going on. Alright, let's do a lag. Come on. 16, 13. Whoa. Not a surprise the monster died. It had been sick anyway. It could barely stand. It was so weak. <laughs> it's like, you know, this reminds me of that, uh, was it Ulti Is it Ultima 7 where that big face comes out and like, makes fun of you all the time? It's kind of reminds me of that. Oh, but you're not ready for my cricket, man. They're not ready. For my locust. For my Thrycreen. Attention, gladiators. Go back to the pens to heal your wounds. Okay. Crowd throws money down to you. Oh, now we're talking. The gladiators seem to have some fight in them. Even a wounded rat will fight if cornered. You <laughs> damn straight it will. Gotta watch those rats. We could yell back at him. Let's see what, what are the options. Wounded rats, huh? Send out your worst. <laughs> Call me a rat again and you'll pay. It's a compliment. You're the best announcer I've seen. Oh well. Well, thanks. Let's see. I think I can look at my character to see. Let's see if that spell is still working. Yes, yeah, so if she's shielded, or he's shielded. Say how long. We just have to check back and see how long that lasts. Let's go ahead and save. <laughs> just to be safe. And then let's look at our loots. You find five. Who has quit? Five pieces. No line of sight. Let's look over here. There's some armor. You know, I'm not sure if I can sell any of this stuff. I never found a place to, to sell it. So I don't want to just clog up my inventory, but we do have some items. There's probably some place you can sell stuff. This is a little bit finicky. Again, you got to be really careful with your mouse control. And I really hope there'll be a place for me to sell some of this gear. Okay, let's take a look at our inventory and see if we can use any of this. Let's see, a couple of bone long swords and we got some leather chest armor. Another sling, let's see. She can't wear armor. I don't know if she would be better off with these swords or not. She could use them. 1d6 plus 2, 1d6 plus 2. 1. 1.5 times 1d8. 4. You know, I guess what this is saying here is if you don't have a weapon, she gets 4 attacks at 1d4 plus 1. 1d4 plus 2. Is that just simplifying it for me? <laughs> or, or maybe that's the offhand, so she gets 1d4 plus 2 with that. Got me. I don't know what the. Not quite sure how to interpret that. So you either get four attacks or you get 1d4 plus two. I think I'd rather have the four 1d4s. And let's see. We've got an extra sling here if anybody needs a sling. What the hell is that? Chachka. Ch Chachka. Is that like one of those Xena like things? row okay so basically nobody I don't have anything that <laughs> anybody can wear <laughs> maybe we can sell it okay I got some gold over there I need to pick up and we need to see what's going on with that let's see so I don't have any healing magic let's see 
Grease, Magic Missile Shield, Fog Cloud, Stinking Cloud, Life Biofeedback. Improves the Cyanosis AC by one and reduces damage from attacks by two. Not sure how long it lasts though. Transform Cyanosis' own skin into a random type of armor dependent upon level of Cyanosis. Well, that might be useful. You know, it's, it's kind of cool that everybody basically has some spells, though. I like that. Detonate, ballistic attack, metabolic, life draining. But I think that's. She's got a couple of mine path. Detonate, ballistic attack, control, body. Allows control of another person's body in combat. The control character fights with a negative six penalty on all attack rolls. So some pretty cool stuff, really. That every character has to play with. <coughs> Alright, let's see what's going on here. <laughs> Tied up prisoner, level five. Uh, help water. Just a little... So should I untie you? Where can I get water? <laughs> should I untie you? Yes! Probably a little biased. Let's see, where can I get water? Uh, help water just a little. I'll free you. Cut him from his bonds. Delirious man. Who are you? I'm Hammond. Uh, help water just a little. Where can I get some water? Who are you? I said I'm, I'm Hammond. Help me, please. I'm Hammond. <laughs> I'm so thirsty. Help me. I'm Hammond. Uh, uh, oh, okay. It looks like he, what did he, puke on himself? What? Oh, go away. What is this guy? Oh, what is this? Got some shoes? Is that what the... Man, gotta be an easier way <laughs> to do this inventory. <laughs> That's tragic. Leather boots. Okay. It doesn't seem to affect my stats in any way, though. Maybe they protect against broken glass on the arena. Okay, let's see. Hey, wasn't there some gold there a while ago? Uh, another club. I don't want that. I want to make sure I've got all the loot. There's another corpse. What's this? Two-handed bone githka. Two-handed bone githka. What is that all about? Bone. Not like basically a spear. <laughs> See, he can't use it. What about the grasshopper? 1d6 plus 2, 1.5. Was it one and a half attacks? 2d4. Again, not sure what's a better option. So that does 2d4 plus 8, 1.5. So 2d4 plus 8 instead of 1d8 plus 1. I think I'm better off with the sword. Okay. Mathematics with Matt Martin. What do we have going on over here? Another prisoner. I'm so thirsty, help me. <laughs> You're not worth letting loose. His body falls to the ground lifelessly. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> I talked to this bird. He's just like, he's anticipating lunch. Well, we're going all over the place. Let's get out of here. Whoop, shibba, shibba, shibba. Excellent. These gladiators wish to fight again. We'll see how they fare. I don't think he just sent some more monsters after me. Let's see, is there anything? There's something. Oh! 
Oh, you can run. <laughs> you better run. Holy sh... Oh, they sent some Thrykreen after me this time. That is not good. Oh, not good. We've got children dressed as gladiators again. I thought I told Kurzak to stop selecting slaves by looking at their teeth. Oh no, I think I'm going to have to reload. <laughs> they apparently sent some bad monsters after me. I think they actually killed one of my dudes. Paralyzed. Out cold. Oh yeah, we're screwed. Let's find it out though, you never know. Wait, where's that? What the hell am I looking at there? Very tough to see what I'm doing. But I think there's a monster like in the midst right there. I think so. What the hell? You know they like to they're using up all my movement, I don't know. Probably not gonna survive this anyway. I killed that one. Let's see, put him on guard duty. Her on guard duty. What is that? <laughs> is that the bad guy? Holy hell, man, I don't know. Look, there's a bad grasshopper right there. <laughs> Torque Reed, yes, fight him. Is this another glitch, I wonder? How close can I get to him? Oh, this is messed up. Yeah, let's just do the guard routine. At least that'll... At least that will, uh... Oops. Yeah, this is driving me crazy! We've got children dressed as clay. What the hell's going on here? Yeah, that Thrykreen just killed my Thrykreen. You know, I don't even consider this a defeat. This is just lame, cheating <laughs> crap. <laughs> Your party's been defeated by being unable to even distinguish the, the monsters. Ugh! But at least we saved it before that, so we're good. Good thing I did too, right? So I think what we should do is just go rest again. <laughs> I don't know if they limit how many times we can go to the arena or not. But I'll just quickly run through this again. We will make you sit through that again. Uh, and then we'll pick up. If I can get over there too. All right, it took me two times, but I finally managed to get back into the slave pens. Holy cow. They are not playing around. Got some weak characters here, that's for sure. Let's get you back to the pens. You obviously need some rest. So I guess the, the key is to, to move quickly here. Let's see what's over here. Here's another door. Door is locked. So, you want to fight a little bit, rest. Place to rest down the east hall. Go through the door. It's placed. I'll come get you when it's. So, we have a little bit of time to mess around basically before he sends us back down to uh, the pins again. So, maybe this time we can. That's Mertzel over there. You prove yourself in the arena and then we'll talk. If you can survive the next fight, you might be worth something. Where are you in here? I gambled on the arena contest all the time. I got a bad tip and bet way over my head. I lost the bet and couldn't pay up. 
pay for my debt, the head Templar sold me into slavery. Ain't that nice. Let's see, what did you stash in the haystack? Oh, uh, what haystack? Oh, that haystack. Wait a minute, why do you think there's something in the haystack? You spying on us? <laughs> we all have haystacks. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Do we want to admit that we overheard the conversation? Why not? If I ever catch you doing that again, I'll have to kill you. Okay, so probably not the best choice in terms of dialogue options, but what can you do? Let's go ahead and rest. Actually, let's see. Who's this guy? Here's the trustee. I've heard about you. I'm surprised I didn't talk to you sooner. Better to be in the pens of Draj than in some doomed slave village somewhere. Did I ever tell you about how I got here? Considering I've never met you, probably not. Let's see, no. I was a victim of circumstance. I was hired by a Templar who needed a guide to Ram. He needed to, he wanted to surprise his brother, so it was just us two, jabbering about how much he hated walking. We were ambushed by a pack of Thrycrete. I fought off six of them, but the Templar died. You were accused of murder? Right, I returned here and told the head Templar what happened. He accused me of setting up the ambush and threw me in the slave pens to fight as a gladiator. Now I just want to take care of all the gladiators. What villages? Did I mention the villages? They're groups of free peoples who have banded together over the years. Hmm, why do I suspect we will be meeting these villagers at some point? They won't buckle under detected. Hey. Let's see, did you win your freedom? Nope, nobody wins their freedom from the pits. Who else is in here? St. Jalal is the woman who sits by herself, Scar and his gang are in the cell in the southwest. Mertzal and his gangs inhabit the northeast. Dinos has a special cell in the southwest. Merlon, the little weasel, is in a room to the west. Let's see, how about... Dino. Where's, tell me about Dinos. Extraordinary cook. When the Templar of the Pens caught wind of his talents, Dinos was taken as his personal chef. Dinos hasn't fought in the arena since. He was moved into a suite of rooms to the south. How can I get to Dinos? I have a key. Go south. I'll be in there in a second. Would you like to meet him? Yes. <laughs> yes, I want to meet this Dinos. Dinos! I wonder if you have to be close up to... Maybe you have to have a line of sight on it. To, no. Sometimes a stack of hay is just a stack of hay. There he comes. Okay, it's open. Don't tell anyone I did this for you. Ah, oh, 200 XP for that. That's awesome. I love getting XP for stuff like that. <laughs> okay, let's see. We got a... I got a broken pot. I wonder if I could use that... To... I'm guessing since it's broken, probably not going to work. No, probably can't. Are those pots? What is this? Go over there. I need to get a bucket of water. Okay, for whatever reason, it is not letting me look at that. Sometimes you just have to go with it. I do need to find a pot, though. Let's see. There's our guy. Dinos! Did you hear someone screaming? Yeah, Galal. Is she alright? She's in severe pain. Take me to her at once. Come on. You can do it. <laughs> Shuffle on over here. She's got some terrible migraines. Right there. Hopefully I'll get some more of that sweet XP. 
Let's see. Dinos lays his hands upon Jalal's head, concentrating. After a few moments, Galal regains her senses and he turns to leave. It worked. I must go now. 350 XP each party member. Somebody <laughs> just flashed up for like a split second, but it said I leveled even better. Thank you for your help. It was uncommonly kind. Let's see, how are you feeling? I feel great. So he must have some healing power. What about escape? In the northernmost monster pen, there is a secret passage which leads to the sewer entrance. It's a big hole in the northwest corner of the pens to the west of the kitchen. You just have to push the button in the corner of the pen and it will open. Hmm. So in the northernmost monster pen, there's a secret passage. So we have to either distract or kill the guards. So that's a pretty good lead. Let's see how far did you get? I made it as far as the desert. Hmm. Some kind of memory block in my head so that I wouldn't be able to tell anyone my story. <laughs> Let's see. You're planning to escape. What's the wilderness like? Well, I didn't get too far, but I heard there's villages. There's those villages again. See how? Where are they? I don't really know. I grew up in the city. So we got some. Sound like there's some villages out there somewhere where there's escaped slaves. That's probably where I want to go. That's it. I guess we could invite her to come along. I'm not sure. But I wish you the best of luck. So she doesn't want to come. So why don't the villagers fight? Okay, I think we've about got everything useful out of her. Uh, somewhere there must be a bucket. Uh, where is the damn bucket? <laughs> you know, I played this before and I had a bucket. I don't remember where I got the bucket. And I know I need to fill that. Let's see, maybe Dinos has a bucket. Let's see, talk to him again. Uh, let's see, how did you heal her? Galal's mind has been closed by the Templar, so they wouldn't have to kill her. She needs something too important for the Templar to let anybody know. Let's see, why are you in here? I was a chef at the Red Plume Inn in Drudge. The High Templar asked for the best meal in the house, which was Hafalon. The Templar was allergic to Hafalon and assumed that I was trying to cause him undue illness. Oh, that's a sad story. Sure, every restauranteur dreads that. Let me make sure I'm not killed. He's a good cook. That's a good survival skill, man. Learn how to cook. If you're ever in a post apocalyptic scenario. Why find out something that could change that? I'm happy here in the pits. Let's see. What do you know about Galal? What do you know about Scar? Scar and his gang are the strongest fighting gladiators. That's the one I think I need to team up with. Goodbye. <laughs> Look at this guy's bed. What's this? Wardrobe. Search through the wardrobe. You don't find anything. Oh, come on. Finds a pot. Thank you. There's my pot. Now I should be able to fill the pot. That's not too much of an intellectual challenge, is it? <laughs> How does one... F That's a broken pot. No, there's a... Are they all broken? Broken pot. I don't. <sighs> Look, there is a sink. 
How do I get the water into my pot? Okay, maybe since it's broken, maybe there's an intact pot around here somewhere. What's up with this? Why can't I do anything over there? So it's it's teasing me. Search through it, yes. Finds a small gym. Check out the gym. But I don't need a gym, I need a, <laughs> a pot. <laughs> Another gym. Okay. I wonder if Dino's is gonna get mad that I'm taking all his gems. I just get whacked. Another gem. Man, how many of these gems are in there? Look at this. It's worth some gold if I could ever find a vendor. Okay, it's empty. What is this, another door? Oh, that door leads to the fountain and the head templar. Only the trusty, the head templar and Kurzak have keys. Okay, so I probably don't want to mess around with that yet. But you know, I've got to find a bucket. Is there a way to trade with people? Doesn't look like it. All right. Yeah, Got to be a bucket around here somewhere. There's Scar again. Well, what's this business down here in the corner? Maybe that's it. Nope. <laughs> Whatever that is. <laughs> Who's this guy? There's Merlon again. See, can you help me? What do you want? <laughs> Let's talk escape. Escape, I've considered it, but I don't have much chance of succeeding by myself. Together we could do it. But first we need money. Where could I find money? Well, I happen to know the location of a very valuable gem. If you find it and bring it to me, I may be able to apply the proper bribes. Let's see, it was owned by a slave named Simeon. He's chained up in the arena. It's probably still on his buddy. Good luck. All right, so we got a, another quest there to find the gym. Let's go ahead and save our game. I think what we'll do in this video, we'll try to get to the... We'll try to do finish this arena phase, and that should be a pretty good stopping point. See, I've heard about you. I'm surprised I didn't talk to you sooner. I told you about how I got to be a trustee. Yes. <laughs> Let's see, who else is in the slave pens? I guess we don't need to talk to him again. Could probably maybe pickpocket him at some point to get his key. Door. Oh, open it. <laughs> Let's see. He wouldn't. I wouldn't open that door. <laughs> That's why you're still a slave. <laughs> it's haunted, plain and simple. There's nothing more to say. Oh, it's haunted. Knock on it. After a moment, the door opens slowly. Ooh, creepy. Let's get in there. Uh-huh, something's over there. Let's see, is there anything worth looting in here? A breeze picks up in the room, suddenly closing the door. Huh? And we have a monster here, a zombie. All right, Sean, boy. Let's see, is he my... Sean, boy. My mule. With psychic powers. Let's try this... Uh, Ballistic attack. Four points of damage. And we have our Thrycreen. Five, five. Got him. Hammond, here's a secret door shut and lock. 
Okay, we have got to find that secret door. Is that it? <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> oh, talk about pixel hunting. Look, there's a little button there. Okay, I didn't do this before. Here's a click as the secret door to the west opens. 250 XP. Hell yeah. Hammond finds some suspicious cracks in the wall. With a little searching, he finds a button on the north wall. Yeah, he, f he pressed the button. Now he found the button. Okay. Let's see. What do we have in here? I don't know what that was. A chest. Get. Open. Ooh. Ooh. Why can't I just get it? <laughs> <laughs> Just get the item. Okay, I don't... This is the weirdest inventory system I've ever seen. Okay, we got some bone scale chest armor. Yeah, that's probably better than what she had. AC7, AC8. Yeah, so it's... Our giantess is now better armored. That's a good thing. And then I've got a broken pot and another broken pot. Also some magical arrows. Let's see who. Give those to my ranger. I think, did that work? <laughs> Wooden arrows. I think it worked. Okay. Let's see what else is in here. Do we have a pot that's not broken, please? Let's see what else is in here. Oh. Is that a candle? It's kind of weird. Oh, it's just lighting them. You know what? I wonder if I can get this chest. Yeah, get it. Does that let me? Does that can I put stuff in the chest? Broken pot, broken pot. I'm just gonna drop these broken pots. Oh, don't split it. <laughs> drop it. Drop. Drop. Chest. Ah! Check that out. Okay. So that gives me a little inventory way to manage my inventory. That's cool. Alright, I like that. All right, close it though. <laughs> Alright, close that. Yeah, why not? Let's save it again. Got a box. Exciting times here in World of Dark Sun. <laughs> we have a box. <laughs> what the hell's going on here? Ooh. That looks like another gem to me. So I wonder if I could just use this gem to... Wow, 1,500 gold. Or ceramic pieces, I think is the, what they call that. Alright, so we are kicking some ass now. Got some great gems. Got a box. I think I'm more excited about the box than the gem. <laughs> Whoa! I accidentally closed the game, honey. That kind of day. Alright. Maybe we got a little too excited about that box. Let's get her back up and running here. Hopefully we won't have to watch that intro movie again. Although I do getting I do enjoy getting impaled by that sword. Let's see, load the game. <laughs> a gym. Nice to get to hear that theme music again. All right, come on, come on, come on. What is this after I got the gem? Yes. Okay. We're good to go. I still do not have... I still don't have a... <laughs> a pot to piss in. Take the hinges off the door. That's one way to get out of there. 
Well, let's see, where have I not gone? Let's go. Look, there's a pot. Could it be this easy? Empty water pot. Ah, oh, how did I miss this before? Jesus. Wait, did I get it? Oh, there we go. <laughs> the precious pot. <laughs> okay, now we should be able to fill that pot with some water. Hope he doesn't call me back to the arena before we get this done. Okay. How do I... Let's see. What is... Okay, maybe that's fill the pot <laughs> idea. I have an idea. Let's fill the pot with water. Yes, yeah, it's a very complex concept. You! You figured out you should fill a pot with water. 200 XP. Wow, genius. Feels so brilliant. <laughs> All right, let's go back to our hemorrhoid ring and rest up. Yes. Okay. That guy should be, yep, time to go back to the arena. So we should be in a little bit better shape now. Let's just make sure. Okay. Doesn't need armor. She's got some improved armor. We've got our water pot. Let's go. You know, he can use a staff, but man, that staff with the blade on the end is just too complicated. <laughs> it's just too advanced. <laughs> okay, let's do our... Yep, let's get in there and fight some more. That's what I bought this game for, was to fight. I want to fill up water bottles all day. Be the water boy. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Wonder what I'll be fighting this time. Life and times in the arena of Dark Sun. Here's my dude. Let's get out there and fight. These slaves have proven their worth. It seems the arena purchased wisely. On this day, King Tek Tuk Title once again presents Draj with his gifts of battle and death. Hell Tek Tuk Title and the various armies of, and, and the victorious <laughs> armies of Draj. Does that mean I'll be fighting? Yes, here come the oh, big old big pack. Alright, let's get a spell on him. We've got Grease, Shield, Magic Missile, Wall of Fog. Let's do the sh... It looked like he took damage there somehow. Why would I take damage casting a shield spell? Oh, I don't like the looks of this. That's a lot of Thrykreen. Thry okay, let's attack. Get her in there. Three, three, and they did not die. Sixteen. Got one down. I don't know if we'll survive this or not. Especially if my shield spells are killing me instead of protecting me. Five, five. Oh, I don't know. <sighs> you know, some of these games, if you try to cast a spell and they're too close to somebody, they get a free attack on you. I don't know if that's what's going on. Looks like she, or he was able to cast that. Let's try the stinking cloud. I know you can't, you gotta be careful with how you place this. Looks about right. Just don't wanna affect my own crew with it. Man. Okay, that's my guy. Really hard to see. Thrite Creens, I don't think they can attack while they're in that cloud. See, there's Zulak. Alright, Hammond here again. 
can't see what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> Just try to cast something. Let's go with the uh, magic missile. Try not to hit your own guy. Surely it wouldn't let me kill my own guy, huh? <laughs> Okay, now we need to be very careful. But I think the way I got them positioned here, they're stuck in that cloud. Switch into a ranged attack. Boom! One point of damage. The mighty, the mighty sonicist. Preserver. So is there one more? I think there's one more down there. Or is there two more? That's the hard, the hard, the challenge of the game is am I targeting the enemy or my own characters? Throw that rock. Let's do the chakra. Can't attack. Why can't you attack? Am I done? I don't think I'm out of combat. Put her on guard duty. Yeah, there's another one in there. 16. Boom. Got it. Crowd yawns. A few are still awake to applaud. Oh, sorry for the delay. I was just resting my eyes. <laughs> Attention, gladiators. Go back to the pins to heal your wounds. Beastmaster, check if those monsters are dead or just sleeping. These pathetic sorry excuses for gladiators are not our only entertainment. Don't worry, real warriors will be fighting later today. Oh, We're not real warriors yet. So I guess we didn't do a good enough job to get money. But at least we... let's just... Make, did I survive? Looks like everybody's okay, good. Well, now we got the water though, we can get the water. Let's see, I got water. Are you Simeon? Yes, I'm Simeon. Where can I get water? I got water! I got a bucket of water! Uh, okay. Pot of water. Okay. Is that how you do this? Wow, I needed that. Thanks. I'm getting out of here. Each party receives 750 XP. Now wait a minute, he, he's supposed to tell me about his gym, right? Hold on, I'll talk to you in a minute. What the hell? I thought he was going to give me a gym. Talk to him again. Okay, so tell me about the Veiled Alliance. Huh? What the hell? I don't know what the Veiled Alliance is. Do I know what the Veiled Alliance is? I'm not from the Veiled Alliance. No need to shout. I only need to be told something once. <laughs> what about the Veiled Alliance? Nothing. That's the trouble. I was turned in because I was looking for the Alliance. Just tell me the name of one contact. Anybody. Let's see. Where is that gem? I hid it back in the pens. It's in one of the grain pots. Would it help me in the arena? You made me? In the arena? I don't think I'd be any help. Okay, so now we need to go back in there and get the, the pot, but I think we should probably rest first. Yeah. It's kind of hard when you go... It's getting tougher every time. I don't know if my guys are leveling up quick enough. So I think that's our third day. And I guess our contact in here is probably going to want that one particular gem. Ah! All right, man, you got to be careful. You click the wrong, wrong button, you got to exits out. All right. So let's see. We've got get some more water, maybe. 
I wonder if that gem would be good enough to get us to the next leg of this game. Let's see, drop that. Drop that. I still haven't found anybody I could trade with, but I guess that's probably coming up in the place to rest down the east hall. Kind of. Maybe the next leg of the game we could sell all of our stuff. Let's see now. Who was that that had the. They wanted the gem. This guy, right? Let's see if he'll take that gem we got from the zombies. Hey there, it's good to see you. I've got the gem. Good, I'll take that. Give the gem to Merlon? Yes. Great, now here's the plan. I have a secret patron in the city who bribed the guard captain. Even so, there might be some trouble, so it'd be better if we went separately. You can leave now. How do I get there? This is what you do. Go to the main gate and tell Kurzak I sent you. Go through the door to the west, then turn south. Follow the main passage as it turns west and south. When it ends, turn west. Our patron will be waiting. Who is this patron? I can't say. If his identity were known, he would lose much. Probably his life. <laughs> Aren't you coming? <laughs> no, not just yet. Has some matters to tend to. Hmm. I don't think this is the right way to go. No way, you're coming with me. Very well, I'll follow you up past Kurzak, then you take the lead. I must know more about this patron. I'll tell you some, but I hope you won't but I hope you know better than to repeat it. I wasn't always a slave. My family was noble until Tectictitle ordered our house disbanded. My patron is someone still aligned with us. That's all I that's all I can say no more of him. Why was your house disbanded? He op we openly opposed the brutality of the Templars. Good luck. Alright, I guess we did, probably should have rested before, <laughs> before this. Let's see how far we go. Probably going to be doing the old reload here in a minute. Let's see, there's the main gate, right? Use. Let me in. Merlin sent me. I'm on my way, slave. You got here fast. Come on, then. Don't stand around. Wait a minute now. So let's see. He wants me to go this way. Here we go. So let's see. Go through here. Keep moving. There's quite a way to go. It's down this corridor, then we'll take a left. Yeah, this does feel a lot like a Sierra game at this point. Like Police Quest or Dark Sun Quest. Let's just skip to the dialogue. You really don't need my help, but I understand your concern. I'll take all the help I can get. I don't know what's all all this up there. Like some cool stuff. So we'll be there soon. Nope, there's a pot. The pot is filled with grain. It would be almost impossible to find anything hidden inside. Because it's filled with grain. Okay. <laughs> yes, that would make it impossible to find anything in there. Gotta remember that. Just in this room. What kind of... What is that, like a rug? A lizard rug? Why do I get a bad feeling? So you've escaped. I admire your resourcefulness and skill. I am prepared to grant you your freedom and four guavas of healing. In return, you will go to the main city, to the Headless Giant Tavern. To the Headless Giant Tavern. Tell the bartender that Petukle sent you. I can use warriors such as yourselves. And what if I killed you right now? I accept the proposition. Tell me more about the mission. Templars are scum. Die. <laughs> I want more than just the robbers. 
I've already paid to be free. Why should I trust you? Let's just do that. I must think about this. You must decide before you leave this room. If you leave, I'll call the alarm. Can we loot the room while we're waiting? <laughs> oh, let's see. He's level 8. He's going to kick our butt. Let's see. Do we want to go with his offer? I really don't trust the guy. Yeah, I'm just going to decide to go on my own. Hey, somebody call the alarm! Oh boy. What are we up against here? Just the one guard? Might be able to take just one guard. Ah. Go oh, back! No path from here. Okay, let's try the chakra. Is it really that easy? Must be some of the guards out here or something, huh? Or do I have to fight the... Jeez, you know what? I probably have to fight that guy. Duh. He's got his sword out. Well, maybe I can, like... Come out here and at least stay out of his area effects. Let's see, does she... He... <laughs> he's still got his shield spell going, that's cool. Because otherwise, I think he's out of spells. Sonic power, life draining, biofeedback, flesh armor, craft weapon, mind blank. Well, let's just do the old... Uh, ranged attack. It's all up to my grasshopper. Can he kill a level 8? Alright, get Zulek back in there. What, did they already kill my other guy? Whoa, 15 points of damage. That's nice. Four. Man, what would I do without this giantess? Two, four, six. Got him! Oh, that's not nice. They're still trying to get the guards on me. Hey, there's the key, though. Let's see, key. Some kind of knife. Whatever the <laughs> hell that is. <laughs> what are these guts? Sausages? Shotgun shells. No, don't stop. Don't stop till you're good at all. Whatever these things are. Okay, what all did I... Guavas. So those are the heels. Okay. Let's go ahead and use one, I guess. Dead? What are these things poisoned? Are you kidding me? Ah. Well, I guess that means we have to reload. I'm not going to play with a dead character. Look at that. Ah. You know, and in despair, they just all eat the, <laughs> eat the coffins. <laughs> Wait, that didn't kill him? Man, what is going on? I guess only one of those guavas was poisoned? Look. Guava. Give the guava to the grasshopper. Eat the... Yep. Poison. Man. Okay, I'm gonna reload. So yeah, we could go with that and just accept that as our role-playing. <laughs> our party died and we ate poison guavas that we're supposed to heal. Man, this is a dark sun. Dark game. So I'm not going to deal with that guy again. This guy seems more... Scars! 
who I should go with. This is Mertzal again. I'm Hammond. Glad to see you face to face. Let's see, why are you in here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scar is the guy. Let's go ahead and rest up first. All right, we've rested up. Good. I wish there was a way I could get that guy's stuff without having to, to die. He's going to sick the guards on me, though. I don't... Let's see, where is Scar? Come back to me after a couple more bouts. Okay, so we're not quite good enough. So let's just do our combats. I guess it's waiting on me to do something. Eh, what else is there to do, though? Let me talk to the trustee again. Maybe you need to trigger a... Let's see. Uh, did I ever tell you about the slave pens? No. Right. What else do you know about the pins? What do you want to know? You never get out of here. Who are the leaders? I already know that. Can any of the guards be bribed? Kurzak likes money. Takes more money than you have to buy freedom. Okay, I still think our best bet is just to keep fighting until we're... Until we're... Impressive to Scar. Use the door. I want to fight! I am on my way, slave! So I think we're up to our third, fourth day. So we should be just about ready. Go through. Through the door. <laughs> yes. Please wait. Okay. This should go a little bit better this time. Oh, look, there's our dude still. Still there. Simeon. I'd like to thank you again for saving me. Let's see, where is that gem? I hid it in the pens. It's in one of the grain pots. Oh, the grain pot. So somehow I'm going to have to get to that grain pot. Okay. Let's see, these gladiators, strong and skilled, have yet to be truly tested. We will challenge them this day to prove their worth against our monster trainer's best. <laughs> okay, with the... The weakling monsters, honestly, really. Whoa! What in... What is... Look at that thing, what is... Monster stalkers, oh great, these are big bad guys. All right, we're gonna need all our fire firepower. Let's see, Hammond. Not shielded anymore. What is our biggest boom? Stinking cloud or fog cloud? I'm thinking stinking cloud is the way to go. Alright, now it's Sean Boy. Let's just back you up, Sean Boy. Okay, now I'll cast a spell. Somehow. Alright, psionic power. Detonate. 1 to 10 points of damage to any creature within its area of effect. I think that's what I want to do. Something flashed. I don't know what that said. Uh, let's see. I don't know if I can get him in range. So let's just wait. 
his turn out. This guy shouldn't be able to attack. Okay, there's Zulak. I don't know, do you only get one attack? What is happening? Why did you... Why did he move into the cloud? Attack this guy. I don't know what's going on, hell. Just have him wait. Guard. Man, have I mentioned this interface is a pain in the... <laughs> okay, Hammond. Get back. Okay, let's see. What else do we have we can throw? Two level one spells. Grease, magic missile, shield, wall of fog. And we better shield up again. And Sean boy's not liking where he's at. I don't know if they get a free attack on me if I do a psionic ability. Let's just try it. Ballistic attack. I think that said it failed. I guess there's a chance those fail. That's just great. Going after my giantess. This is going to be close. Probably not going to survive it. Oh, it's over now. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, guys, I don't think I'm going to be able to get past this first leg of this game. Not with this party. Not happening with this party. Yep. You know, I'm just going to have to seed defeat, I'm afraid. Uh, I don't know. I, I guess I would... Not sure what I would do differently. Maybe have a different party. Definitely going to need stronger uh, characters in melee, because it seems like that's what they go towards. Uh, maybe try to get some more fighting in before this third or fourth day. I'm not sure what the best tack is. But this ain't it. Ah. Huh. You know, I hate to quit on that note. I'm going to try this again. Maybe try to think of some other way to survive that encounter. Let's see, my guys are not... Place to rest down the hall. Okay, I need to try to figure out a way to get some better gear or some, uh, you know, just some way to get stronger before that big battle. Not sure who's going to be able to help me though. I mean, Dino? Goodbye. I guess I could just break down that door. Fight guards. I don't know what else I can do to get more powerful. Yeah, just making sure I didn't skip anything. There's Scar again. He's not going to help. Who's that dude? Well, we're just going to have to figure out a way to survive that battle. Going to have to be a little more strategic, I think. Let's 
Summon Kurzak. I want to fight. All right. We can survive this. No, there's got to be a way. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll save it when we get out here. And I'll just do this however many times it takes. Won't be defeated. <laughs> Misspelled it, but that's okay. Arr! Okay, reloaded. <laughs> this time. I'll just think about this a minute. So, I wonder if I can... You know, maybe sneak up in a corner or something so they can't... You know, so I can get a bit of a tactical advantage. Let's see what happens. There's another skeleton. Yeah, I can sort of sneak up in there. Let's... He hasn't announced a combat yet. There we go. Okay. Let's rush back into this corner. Ooh, I don't like the fact that this guy's right there, but... Okay, magic time. Grease, magic missile, shield, wall of fog. Let's try our stinking cloud again. Okay. Now here's our grasshopper. Oh, quit the... Let's see, can I attack right there? Five. Missed a bunch of times. Here's Sean Boy. Let's see what kind of spells he's got. Seems to keep failing with these spells. Not sure what that 13 means. 13 check mark. 18 PP. What does that mean? Uh, Sonic 2, Psy Power 37. I just do not know. I'll have to try it though, because I don't know what else to do. Wait a minute. I thought this was an AOE type of deal. Okay, I guess that's... He's not passing his check. Let's try a shield. Okay. Sean Boy again. So maybe that means there's only a 13% chance of that spell working? Is that what that means? Life training, spear invisibility, sonic blast. Let's try that. Can't tell if that did anything. He's dead anyway. Got one down. All right, he can't attack that guy. About a ranged attack. Can't attack. Why can't he attack? Is he in? You get himself inside the bubble. All right, he can't attack. Alright. <laughs> Put him in guard. Okay, there's.
his ham on. So that guy shouldn't be able to attack. Okay. Let's try the magic... Maybe grease might be the way to go. Slips and can't move for a round. Yeah, let's try that. I see what that interface is trying to do. It's trying to put a box around the, the creatures this affects. Doesn't seem to be working on that big guy there, so let me try something else. Don't exit the game! You know what? When in doubt, just use Magic Missile. Okay, there's back to Sean, boy. Yeah, this guy must somehow or another got caught inside the effect. So he's got no choice now but to just wait. I think he can get out of the... <sighs> so much for tactics. <laughs> oh, he got the attacking though. Okay, that's good. We might still survive this. Longsword is broken? What, you mean he can damage your items in this game? Oh, <laughs> just can't get a break. Oh, do I have an extra weapon? I guess that's why they kept giving you so many clubs and stuff. Well, let's see, how about this thing? Let's see, take that away. Put that on. All right. It's a good thing I had that. Cool. Yeah, this, you know, it doesn't look like he's inside the area of effect there, but I guess he is, so. Or she is. Let's keep guarding. Sean boy. You know, really the thing I'm worried about is that mountain stalker there. Okay. See, what else can we do with Hammond? This is tough. You know, this is what I love about games, though, man. You get a situation like this. It's like, I don't know how this is going to go. I'm just trying to break out all of my... All of my strategies, all of my tactics. Try to figure out something that might work. He hasn't been damaged yet. Let's see, maybe just stick to the ranged weapons. I guess he doesn't have a line of sight on him. Alright, well, I'll just rest. Guard. Okay, there we go. It's all in now. That guy's probably guarding, so... I'm gonna just get into position here and make him come to me. Sean, boy, you have anything you can throw at this guy. Thinking when it think, tricks an opponent into thinking it has lost 80% of its hit points. That sounds pretty cool, but I don't know how useful it would be at this point. Can't hit him with that, though. Let's see about a... Uh, Blast. I guess he's not quite in the right position. Let's just have him wait. Wait. Now you, I want to make sure, doesn't get in range of that guy. Let's put him there. Let's see, does he have anything left he can cast? I think we're completely out of spells. Flesh armor, craft weapon, biofeedback, life draining. So what's this flesh armor? Let's try that. 
Boom, two, four, three. Now we get to hit him with my Giantess. 11 points of damage. That's respectable. All right, we're back to Sean, boy. Let's try that blast. Power check fails. Okay, clearly there is something I'm not getting about that process. Let's just try it again. 10 PP. So he's using this this power. I guess it's just a. It worked that time, I guess. Didn't tell me how much damage it did though. Two, two, three. Oh man, I wonder how many hit points this thing has left. Let's take a look. I might do this. I might do it. He's. That's looking good. Okay. Come on. <laughs> Don't exit the game, whatever you do. Just get off this menu. Why am I stuck on this? Go away. Talk to you. Oh. And I'm, like, I'm more afraid I'm going to accidentally move or something and kill myself. Right. Oh, I got my Thrycreen down. Oh, don't die, Zulak. Come on, Zulak. You know, I must almost be dead. Two, oh! <laughs> I got him! <laughs> Sweet Jesus! <laughs> Woo! Save! 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 Oh, for the love of God! You saw it, folks! You saw me triumph! Oh, okay, I accidentally quit it, but uh, it's okay. I saved it. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna reload. We're gonna go back in there and we're gonna get to the next leg of this. Must be getting a little too hasty with my saving and somehow making an exit the program. Sorry for the delay. Okay, yeah, I guess they did. I guess they didn't think that was worthy of gold showering down upon me, but. Uh, okay, I guess that's about all we can do. What's this guy? Thought I dealt with him already. We better get the hell out of here before they send more monsters after us. Okay, hopefully old Scar will be impressed enough now to help me escape. Back to the slave pit. Yeah, I guess ideally we would be fighting multiple times in there just to maximize our XP. Probably a little bit behind. That's why it's so tough. Alright, scar, scar, scar. Ba -do -ba -do -ba -do. I saw you out in the arena. You know what you're doing. I could use you. <laughs> Do you mean, you, you know, and I feel like I earned this guy's respect at this point, right? What do you mean, use me? I'm the toughest out here. Do what I say. Let's jump the guards and hack away. Let's talk escape. Right to the point, eh? Hey, what's your plan? What do you mean, use me? I have a plan. Listen, I can arrange for us to fight each other in the arena. I know how to get out the west gate. They don't use it anymore. It should be lightly guarded. We meet in the arena and fight our way out. I like it. When do we start? Good. Just keep fighting in the arena like a good gladiator and when you see us be ready to run for the west gate. Okay. We have a plan. Is there anything else to do other than just go back in there and fight?
I'm still kind of curious what those guys had in their in their haystack. Save. Don't exit. Ah, I guess it automatically exits now. That's annoying. All right. <clears throat> You know what I'm thinking? I want that guy's gym. They told me how to where to go to get it. Let's just It's in that left corner. Let's figure out how to get in and get that. I'm on my way, slave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we can go around this side. Break through this door. Uh-oh. Okay, maybe that wasn't smart. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's what I want to do. How do I get back to the game menu? Uh, load the game. Load. Do not restart the game. Just, uh, maybe you have to uh, take that guy up on his offer or be ambushed if you want to go that route and get the gym. So let's just do this. Though. We'll skip that bit. I just want to get out of this arena. Not that the game's going to get any easier, I'm guessing. Okay. So he says there he wants me to draw the battle out, but then if I take too long, I guess I don't get the gold reward? Make up your mind. Okay. This day we have a surprise. The king of the pen, Scar, has become so disgusted with the survival of these scum that he has offered to kill them himself to make room in the pens for real gladiators. And this is like reminding me of a WWE type stuff. Perfect plan, isn't it? I know just the way to escape. Let's get out of here. We make a break for the west exit on one. Ready? Three, two, one, go! See west exit. That's the west exit, is it not? Gladiators escaping. Guards, sound the alarm. This corridor leads down to the slave pens. Do you wish to continue? Yes. Hopefully, we're not betrayed again. And the game doesn't crash. No, there we go. Who is that guy? The doors to the arena slam shut behind you. Help! Somebody sound the alarm! Call for reinforcements! Who's this guy? What's this guy? What? Oh, that's Scar's henchman. Okay, so I guess we're escaping. Escape! I'm tired of that guy being in control. There we go. Put my grasshopper in the lead. Oh, here we go. Got to fight our way out. Is just the one guy? I don't think we could take one guy. There, have a... Don't talk to him. Fight him. Three. Four. Ooh. Ooh. Don't do that again. Maybe I should just let Scar and his henchmen take care of these guys. Man, 10 points of damage are just stupid arrows. Yeah, there's another guard. Okay, this ain't gonna be easy. Oh, they keep using those arrows on me. 
You know, so far all this damn Sionis has done is fail at every spell and get knocked unconscious at every battle. I hope he gets more powerful because that is going to get annoying, annoying. Even Hammond's doing better at staying alive than that guy. Grasshopper, hop on over. Four, six. Yeah, I guess depending on who you side with which gang, it means how many of these assistants you have to work with. Probably should have just let Scar do all the dirty work. Maybe I could loot his corpse if he dies. Hmm. Man, they're just going right for my spellcasters every time. Even with all this stuff around them. Look at that. I don't have any way to heal either. Let's see, am I done? I think I'm still in combat. This is where our paths diverge. Continue to the north. We'll try to escape down south. Good luck. Alright, folks. I think... Should be just about... Ooh, what is this? Get a little better gear. Harbor. I don't know if our other guys are dead or what. Man, this game has already gotten me hooked, though. Like, I gotta know. Let's see, what is that? Obsidian Longsword. Surely that's an improvement. And what else did he get? Some wooden arrows. Leather arm armor. She's already got it. He can't use it. There we go. <laughs> Maybe that's his problem. <laughs> what is this? Junk. Stone pick. I don't know, is that a tool or is something I actually use? I got another one of these obsidian long swords, but. I guess I'll just keep it as a backup since we know that we can lose our stuff. Okay, let's go to the north. Or do we wanna We wanna hang out here a little bit and see if we can get to that gym. Ooh, what's in here? And greed takes over. Grapes and gold. You know, I think we're going to want that. What else do we have in here? Bed. A chest. Oh. Yep. Should have gotten out of here. <laughs> Now I gotta fight this guy. A Templar. Oh, great. Level 4. Maybe won't be that tough. Of course, he's wedged into a corner. Wait. Sean boy. Oh, what the hell. Let's try your sonic powers again. He's in position for a backstab if he could just survive. Gotta be a better way to do this bit. You can life train. No, <laughs> why would he be able to do that? Huh. Why does it keep clicking on the wrong guy? Sean boy. Oh, this is Hammond's turn now. Okay. 
We've got our spells here. We should be able to do something good. Let's try the magic missile. Seven points going right for Sean. Oh, this isn't good. I think I got a bunch of these Templars to fight now. I got him dead. So maybe this is still doable. Getting some better gear. Trouble is, I don't know if there would be a spot in here for me to rest anywhere. Bone Brigand Chest Armor. Let's see, AC7. I guess that's just the same as what I already had. Can anybody else wear it? Only usable by her. Okay. What else do we find? More leather arm. Bone brigadine leg arm. Leg armor. Okay, maybe that'll come in handy. Yeah, that helped. Okay, good, good, good. I guess he can't wear leg armor. <laughs> Uh, let's see, what else do we do we get there? What is this? A leather shield. Alright, giantess can use that. So she's looking pretty good now. Got a good AC, a lot of health. Feeling pretty good. Okay. Maybe I'll get some more goodies in here. Empty! Well, at least we know where her towel is. Oh, gotta fight another one. Who am I fighting now? That's the big... That's Leg Crusher, is it not? Oh, man, I gotta fight Leg Crusher? No, just a guard. Whew! Got a lot of health though. Let's see, Sean Boy. What about Sean Boy? Do we have anything to throw at him? Ah, try a Sonic Blast. Alright, that just feels every time utterly worthless. This guy's got his magic missile. Eight points of damage, I'll take that. Oh, he's completely... Oh, respectable damage even with that bow. I'm gonna try it again. Got him. This is where it all starts to come together. A shovel. I'm finding all these tools. What do I need a shovel for? Oh, there's another guard. I wonder if I just have to fight all these guys. Just killing everything. Oh, archers. I hate archers. Yeah, he's probably a goner anyway. Maybe I have to be right on top of him to use that life drain spell. Let's try it again. Some life draining. Oh, he got one point of health. <laughs> And he still gets to attack my mage. Look at that. Okay, does he... And he's still got some of those points left. Let's keep it going. I already recovered three. Five. Okay, he's down. You know, this bit, it's starting to feel a lot like a gold box game at this point. I wonder if the monsters surrender in this game, too, if you get them low enough. Have him guard. 
Oh boy, this is a big battle. I see my grain pot up there though. He's hitting hard, just not quite hard enough. Oh, it's probably all over with that Templar in the mix. Damn, he's still up. Oh, I wish my mage wasn't dead, that sucks. Come on, thief. Just can't hit anything. All right, got another set of them down. There's another shield. All this armor, I don't... Not sure what is an upgrade or not, but in when you're in doubt, just grab everything. The corn? Keep getting it. Get the items. Okay. Let's see, did we search this corpse? Nope. Uh. Okay, I don't guess I need to get everything here. Uh, let's see, bone scale chest armor. I guess we don't need the broken weapon. Another shield. I don't know if anybody else can use that. Well, apparently Sean Boy can use it. For God's sake, give it to him. That'll help. They can use a shield, but that leg armor is just beyond his capabilities. What's with the corn? Did that heal you or something? Junk. Okay, let's just try the try the corn. What did that do to him? Bark skin. So eating that corn gave him bark skin. Okay. The pot is filled with grain. Oh, so I guess that's not the pot with the gem in it after all. Okay, I don't want to go in that room. I guess I had to break through one of these. What am I fighting? Oh, another guard. Alright, so apparently they can still use their ranged attacks even if I'm at a distance. Yeah, see that guy's right there, but he's still able to attack. On, boy. They usually they get an attack of opportunity on you if you're, you got a guy right there. All right. Oh, they keep coming. And Sean boy, uh, for whatever reason, is not where I wanted him. Okay. I guess I am going to have to clean out this whole little level. This looks ideal though. My kill zone. This is a lot. Alright, got another one down. Excellent. What is that? Okay, let's see what I got there. Star fruit. Don't know what it does. Let's give it to Sean, boy, though. <laughs> Gave him some kind of perk. 
Invisibility to undead. Extra hit points. Now what is that thing? You cleared that room for no reason. I got a feeling that I'm going to have to get inside one of these rooms. I think he said it was the northernmost room that had the secret exit. Alright. Uh, okay, I think I'll just uh, stop the video and fight the rest of this stuff and get to the next level. Alright, folks. You're not going to believe this. <laughs> I found my way out of here. And then uh, when I tried to put the file into Vegas, the video was corrupted, so I'm just going to see if I can do it again, because at this point, I'm ready to kill this game. So maybe I could just luck out and get there without too much trouble, just to show you that sewer grate, because I feel like I need this. <laughs> it's like my mage is suddenly kicking ass in melee combat. You know, I gotta say, this game is, uh, it's, it's really frustrating. But at the same time, it's just kind of maddening because I really just can't leave it. You know, I feel like it's challenged me. <laughs> it's like, it's challenged me. Can I, in fact, do this or is it going to kill me before I can get out of here? In more ways than one, I swear to God. I think I got this down to a science at this point, so we'll, we'll see. I'm not even messing around this time. We're just all in it. I halfway expect my video not to work. Let's see, get him. Got him cornered in there. Boom! Come on, guys. <laughs> You know, it's a good thing I had the save where I did. I can't quite get her to shoot. Oh, she's out of arrows. That's why. You know, I guess as long as I'm messing with this, I... Okay, he's good. Should try to do it right. I feel like I get better every time he crashes and I have to redo the, do the level. Okay, why is this... Guess you just can't get a line. There we go. It's too bad my ranger's not better with a bow. Okay, we're not even going to loot corpses. We are just going to make our way. And yes, there's some cool stuff there. But we're just going to make our way. I am a man obsessed. I want to get to the finish line here. I don't care what it takes, fate. <laughs> You're not going to mess with me, game. X-Split, you can do your thing. Vegas, you can crash. I don't care. There it is! <laughs> the sewer grate! Oh my god, I've never been this happy to see a damn sewer grate. You know, Mouse, you can go crazy. I don't care. And we're supposed to have a key because we're supposed to, uh... You know, have gotten a key from a guard. That's okay. Uh, let me just wrap this up before it wraps me up. Uh... All in all, you know, I hope I haven't given the impression I didn't like this game. Yes, it's got a few... Let me just shut this down. Uh, yes, it's got a few issues with it. I'm not going to lie. The uh, uh, the interface is a bit of a pain. Uh, some of that could probably be alleviated with some patches, some mods, uh, maybe just learning the hotkeys. You know, it'd probably be a step in the right direction. Uh, Graphic-wise, I really like the graphic style. You know, I'm, it kind of reminds me of... Uh, it's just sort of that classic pixelated style of the, of the time. It's quite in, in line with other games of the period. Uh, sometimes you don't know what something is, but that's okay. You know, it's fairly easy to figure it out. Uh, music, I really enjoyed the MIDI soundtrack. It's, uh, you know, not, not everybody's going to like that. Not everybody likes uh, that style. I just happen to really enjoy it, so it worked well for me. Uh, the storyline is, is good so far. You know, I haven't seen enough of the game <laughs> to really appreciate uh, everything that it has to offer, but it's it's enough, and I like the, uh, you know, the characters being taunted a little bit 
it kind of really makes it personal, you know, when you're in there trying to, to beat this thing. Kind of reminds me a little bit of, uh, you know, like I said, some of the stories in the, the War of the Twins or even that, um, oh God, what was that movie, uh, television series, not Gladiator, uh, but it had gladi gladiators in it. I can't even remember the name of it. <laughs> anyway, it's it, it's okay. Probably not going to win any big awards for narrative, but uh, uh, it's nice. Uh, let's see what else. Um, the interface, again, definitely product of its time. It would be nice to have uh, uh, something a bit more modern than that if you're going to spend a lot of time with it. I, you know, if I was going to play this thing all the way through, I would want to uh, figure out some kind of way to make the mouse a little bit easier to deal with, keep it from jumping around so much. Uh, I could sort of deal with it as is, but it would be nice to have a maybe uh, tweak the settings a little bit or whatever to, to get that to work. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, you know, everything else is pretty much uh, top notch. I think the challenge level is definitely on the hard side, but uh, as you play it over and over again, you'll get better at it. And it didn't really, a couple times there, it was a little bit iffy, you know, couldn't quite make out what was going on, so I didn't feel really uh, good about losing. Uh, but most of the time, though, I felt like, okay, that's fair. I just need to go back in, think about my tactics some more, uh, maybe even create some new characters to, you know, uh, really optimize uh, the powers and, and, and so on and so forth. Pay, I'll pay more attention to detail. You know, there was very few things that felt unfair or rigged. You know, let's just put it that way. Uh, so I'm going to put it, I'm going to go this way. If you like this era of games, if you played the Gold Box series and, you know, games of that sort, you're kind of bored with that, looking for something different, you could do a lot worse than this. Uh, the Dark Sun series, especially if you do like that sort of post-apocalyptic settings, but at the same time you want your, your dwarves and your malls and, and whatever. And I don't know too many other games that are set in the Dark Sun campaign setting. Now that I'm thinking about it. So obviously if you're a fan of that setting, you can't go wrong. Uh, I would say I feel pretty good about three out of five stars on it. Maybe four out of five if I, if you really looked into some modding and some ways to, you know, just basically quality of life issues. Uh, but I enjoyed it. it it's, it's one of those things that drives you sort of crazy enough, but at the same time you're you're the, like the whole day goes by <laughs> you've been playing this thing you, you set out to do like a you know an hour-long uh tour of duty if you will and here it is like a two days later and you're still just ah! <laughs> this game just kind of go it makes you crazy uh, maybe in a good way maybe in a bad way <laughs> i'm kind of crazy to begin with so i take it with a grain of salt but i'm going to wrap it up here hopefully this time the video will actually render properly and we can finish this thing, and I will see you later. And thanks for bearing with me on this. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Tried to make it extra long and extra good because, uh, you know, we got back to school in a couple of weeks from now perish the thought but you know i might easily get overwhelmed uh just trying to get prepped for that so if you don't see me for a while you'll know that's what it is just overwhelmed with my professorial duties but i promise to be back as soon as possible to give you more uh, videos we've got so much stuff left to cover my god uh, and as always, I want to thank you uh, very, very, very much for your support in making all of this possible. 455 episodes, and I couldn't have done a single one without you. So thanks so much for that. Uh, if you want to support the show, uh, just go to that. There's a couple options. You can go to that link in the show notes to the, uh, or the YouTube uh, description, whatever they call that, uh, to the Patreon page. You can go to matchat.us, look at the PayPal options there. Lots of ways uh, to support the show. You know, I don't ask for much. I like a buck a show. <laughs> if you thought this uh, video was worth a dollar, and I think if you sat through it all, <laughs> it was definitely worth a dollar. You know, I'd like to have that dollar. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for your support, guys. It really does mean a lot to me. In, in all seriousness, thank you very much uh, for helping me do this show. <laughs> wow. All right, what about that news from the Matt Cave?
well, it's kind of a, been a quiet time. You know, I didn't really see a whole lot of stuff to report. Uh, I sort of had to dig to find some, uh, some pretty cool things for you. Uh, but I did come up with a few items here uh, that may be of possible interest. Uh, one is that game, uh, Darkest Dungeon. If you remember that, there's going to be a board game version of that. And you can look at the miniatures they've produced for it. It's pretty cool. Let's see, Mike Wilson is on a site of a site called Bloody hyphen disgusting.com says mythic games is announcing the board game will be receiving a kickstarter later this fall and it looks to remain as faithful to the video game as possible using many of the same elements anyway i think it might be worth picking up just for these miniatures they look pretty cool uh second bit of business we've got hellboy franchise also launching a kickstarter uh, they already have a board game out uh, for Hellboy. Let's see, this is Graham McMillan of Heat Vision, developed by Red Scar Publishing. Hellboy, the role-playing game, not to be confused with that earlier project, uh, will allow players the chance to become agents of BPRD for themselves and investigate some of the stranger things in the world of the Bureau of Paranormal Research and Defense. Uh, and the cool thing is, you know, the role-playing game will let you use the miniatures from the board games. It's kind of recycling some things, uh, which is pretty neat. So if you're a big Hellboy, if you're a, you know, Hellboy fan, <laughs> you know, this is exciting times. You'll have a board game and a role-playing game. All right, then just to wrap it up, I found a pretty cool uh, Kickstarter I thought you might be interested in. You know, do you remember being a kid and having those uh, pop-up books? You know what I'm talking about? Uh, they used to, I remember have, having one for Star Wars, and I think I, I'm pretty sure I had a Batman one too, but you know, you open the pages and stuff pops up. It's uh, always just really fascinated me as a kid. I, I just love those books. Uh, well, apparently there's a guy that also loves that stuff named Andy Logan, and he's put together a Kickstarter for a game called Sh The Shivers, and it's a, he's taken that concept of the pop-up book and married it to the uh, board game or role-playing game uh, to create this thing. Uh, allows two to five players to explore a spooky mansion filled with hidden secrets. Let's see, debuting, uh, the print is really, really small here. Let's see if I can zoom in at all. There we go. Uh, the player, the game plays over a series of episodes led by a storyteller who guides the players on their hour-long adventure. Players will have to work together to solve puzzles, find clues and useful items, explore the haunted house, and vanquish spooky foes. When the adventure is complete, just use our patent pending system to swap story cards and rearrange the magnetic room tiles, and a completely new mystery is ready to be discovered. Uh, so congratulations to Andy. He's already met his goal for this, so it's going to go ahead. But if you want to pledge enough to get the copy, uh, to get a copy of your own, it's 65 bucks for this. And I think this would be really great, especially if you have uh, some kids around or uh, you know, maybe you just happen to, yourself to really love pop-up books. But, you know, this basically looks like a work of art to me. Really, really cool collectible stuff. So that's uh, uh, The Shivers, and I'll post a link. Uh, post a link? <laughs> I'll post a link to it in the show notes again so you can check that out and get a copy. Oh, man, what a day. Oh, all right, let's wrap this up with a quote. And I thought it would be fun this time to just tell you the quote, and I'll say it's from one of my favorite movies, and I'll just leave it at that, and I want to see who can, be, who can be the first person, or who will be the first person who can guess, or who knows where this quote come from, what movie it was in. It goes something like this. Life is not fair. It's just fairer than death. So ponder on that, and see you guys next time. Why are you messing with the fantasy? 
We know about the reality. Don't ruin the fantasy, okay?